brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get your 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. In a survey, nearly 100% of boys ages 12 to 15 report that they have sex all the time and are definitely not virgins. Teens say they've gone all the way on numerous occasions, including vaginal sex, oral sex, and regular sex orgies. Previous studies suggested that most boys lose their virginity at 16 or 17, but when we gathered 13-year-olds in a room and asked them if they'd had sex, they not only said yes, but they also were clear that sex was no big deal for them, that they weren't nervous before having it, and that when they do have sex, they do it for hours at a time. And you discovered that these young teenagers have sex with nearly every attractive woman they know, including their babysitters, teachers, and even Hollywood celebrities. 10% of boys in junior high school say they received a blowjob from Katy Perry while they were on vacation in Los Angeles. And what about teenage girls? Did your study find out anything new about their sexual habits? We didn't talk to any teenage girls. The boys we surveyed told us not to because they'd probably just lie and deny it. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free to join us here and bring up whatever happens to be on your mind tonight. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features there. We've got Skype, by the way. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Feel free to reach out to us that way. You'll sound a lot better if you call us on Skype. So that's available. And again, the toll-free number, 855 855- 450 free. Coming up, the TSA secret behavior checklist to spot terrorists. It's not a secret anymore. Oh. And the folks over at The Intercept, which is Glenn Greenwald's new project, uh, this is an exclusive to their website. We'll share that with you when we get a chance. You get the impression the TSA couldn't spot anything and that their checklist is a joke. We'll find out, Mark, uh, a little bit later on. Plus, uh, we got some more on the Indiana Religious Freedom Restoration Act, I believe it is, uh, as it has been called. Uh, we've actually discussed that uh, over the last couple of days on the program, and there's a new development with Mark, you having a story about a, a man who runs a pizza business going ahead and uh, discriminating against gay people, apparently, as I understand it. Well, um, I, I think this just shows what a little sexist you are. I told you a pizza shop owner uh, got in trouble over making a uh, comment. I've seen it. So it's a man. Well, okay. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm All pretty right. sure I've seen it. Are you saying I'm wrong about that? That's not the picture I see here. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm mistaken. There, there's two. I mean, there you go. Crystal so and Kevin O'Connor. Ah, got it. Well, anyway, so we can talk about all of those things. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Also, hopefully we'll hear from Virgil Vaduva tonight because he was sentenced yesterday for his act of civil disobedience in committing panhandling. Uh, so we we'll want to hear from that uh, from him as well. If, uh, if we don't, ultimately we'll tell you what happened. But I was involved in a police lockdown situation this morning, and I'd like to talk about it. Yeah, that I I saw the story on Free Keen today, and that seemed like quite the uh, quite the quite the event this morning. Yeah, um, so every week here in Keene, New Hampshire, where we do this show, there's a good activist community here, and there are a number of folks. There's Boston Strong outside of the studio on a megaphone right now. Wow, that's uh, I just like to to let people know. So there's there's a lot of things that happen here in Keene, New Hampshire. <laughs> And We're being bullhorned during the radio show. It's yeah. hilarious. So, uh, so this guy. So I, that's sort of interrupting what I was going to talk about. Just, just to let people know, there is a, a man with a megaphone who just drove by the studios and is making quite a bit of uh, of clatter out there. I, I think that he's going to be really upset when I do that to his house while he's sleeping because <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> so um, anyway, let's get back on the uh, the track here with the story. <laughs> Police lockdown situation. It's going to be an interesting summer this year here in uh, in Keene, New Hampshire. <laughs> All I wanted to do was be a radio talk show host, Chris. I mean, I it's I wasn't looking to create a whole bunch of enemies or anything like that. How did I end up on this show, doing this guy? You know, I'm I'm sort of musing to myself in a in a, in a semi similar fashion, Mark. I, I I sort of just 
started making YouTube rants. I was just sort of getting some stuff off of my chest, and then all of a sudden, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> you know, six years later, but... <laughs> so, um... So this morning, we, on a weekly basis, have a, a a breakfast that activists get together for and, you know, just, you know, social event kind of it's hanging the, out. Is that the bacon buffet Catching thing? Up. Yeah, it's a, it's a buffet at the local college, which is uh, very, very affordable. And, you know, there's a lot of bacon, so people can have as much of that as they want. All you can eat bacon. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Pretty good deal. It's, a, it's actually a really good time. I look forward to it uh, on a weekly basis. So anyway, we're, we're sitting there with a usual group of uh, folks who attends. Uh, it's hard to get libertarians up in the morning, so it's usually, you know, three to five people. Right. Uh, that, the stalwarts. Uh, that, uh, that come out They can to make this. it up by 1130. Yeah. The it's actually are still up partying from the night before, probably. <laughs> so it's you know it's a nine o'clock uh, kind of an event, and during that nine o'clock hour, at some point, there are a couple of men in olive drab kind of colored fatigues who are walking by. One of them at a brisk Which pace, just red meat to Ian. Uh, one of them <laughs> carrying uh, what appears to be some sort of an automatic rifle, some kind of machine gun looking thing. I don't know what model it was, but. Uh, he was definitely uh, holding that sort of at the ready, pointing downwards, and they're walking uh, across one of the areas of this, the college. And so, of course, we notice that, and well, obviously we start wondering, what's going on? Right. Uh, eventually learning that there's apparently some sort of a school lockdown happening due to a domestic incident that happened not on school campus. So there was some sort of a domestic dispute between a male and female happening in a neighborhood that was maybe adjacent to, I'm not really even sure where it happened, but I know for a fact it was not on campus. It was somewhere else in Keene. And so as a result of this, the police were brought in from all the surrounding towns. I presume the, you know, the sheriffs and the, uh, the state police were activated. I don't know if they had a chance to swing the helicopter out this way uh, at that point. But, uh, but trot out the, all the fun toys. Though. You know, they brought out as many cops as they possibly could to find this man who not just had a domestic incident, incident but had a domestic incident wherein he allegedly fired a gun. Yeah, I was going to say it's, it starts off... Um just a domestic incident, all of these police and military-looking people come in here, and we're like, oh, wait a second. But, yeah, the guy the guy apparently fired a weapon. Not at uh, anyone. Not at anyone. Uh, the report from a witness was that he fired the weapon into the air, which is dangerous yeah, and it's a stupid. terrible thing. In my opinion, a very negligent sort of thing to do. But it's not as dangerous as pointing it at someone and firing it. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty significantly different thing yeah. <laughs> i'd say so you've got this domestic incident this character then flees the scene with the gun apparently and that's what started this so that's why the police were called that's why this oh whole my thing god happened. there's a man with a gun in new hampshire there's a right. dangerous idiot with a gun but and and there's no shortage of people with guns in new hampshire if you right. were to you know check the if you were to search which of course yeah, would be most of them illegal. are not running around with a smoking barrel in the street but <laughs> <laughs> But the the suggestion here was that because somebody fired a gun in Keene, New Hampshire, that the the college needed to be locked down. Well, right, and I and I you you made the point in your your article is that well the reason that you sort of need to have extra protection at the college is because that's like the second place in New Hampshire that you're not allowed to carry a gun. <laughs> yeah, what's the other one? A courtroom? Court. Yeah. Yeah. The courthouse, anything that is in use by the court. courthouse, correct. Uh, you can carry a gun outside yeah. on the courthouse property, but, but if you throw away a gun wrapper, a gum wrapper <laughs> inside the door, then somebody's going to come out and threaten to, to have you locked up, <laughs> which happened to you. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, these you know cops walk by. There's another pair that walk by later. We f sort of finish up our breakfast. And uh, we've already at this point sort of ascertained by hearing from people and hearing things and tuning into the Keen Police Scanner uh, audio shooter. what is going on. And so we know they've locked, supposedly locked down the campus. Well, the three of us had no intention uh, of to, being locked down to be locked down in this cafeteria. <laughs> so now let me get this straight. As my understanding, the school decided to lock down the campus and then sort of employed the police to do it. I don't. I don't know who made that decision to lock the campus down. Okay. I, I think that the police likely showed up on campus after having, you know, because the school wouldn't have known about the gunshot. 
Right? They yeah, wouldn't oh, I'm have not saying that, that the call. school didn't uh, – that the school somehow ascertained that the gunshots I would guess the fired. police recommended the campus be locked down. Well, recommend or not, it's still the, the – that would still be the decision of the school. Probably true. But when will the school not do what the police want them well, to? Yeah, I, I think I if the police that, are like, hey, you ought to lock down your school, and they were like, no, I don't think we will, and then somebody gets shot, I think that those people are going to be, uh, you know uh, – if. They're going to follow the recommendations yeah, of the do police the department. Say. Right, absolutely. I, what I'm trying to, th- to figure out is is that who has a right to lock anything down? If I decide to lock down my property while I have guests and then I disallow them from leaving at the pain of shooting them, am I anything but a kidnapper? I'm sorry, we're yeah. going to be locked down for a long time here. It's dangerous out there. <laughs> well, so I, what I found interesting about this situation was that it was, it really didn't seem like an actual lockdown. I've in been that, tempted to do that with women before. I think it should do with the Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses next time they come around. <laughs> in that we've, we got were, act, we've got an active Bibler that's a lockdown. <laughs> we were able to leave. Uh, as I suspected, we would be able to leave. Uh, but The lockdown be, was sort of a kind suggestion. Like a strong suggestion. There yeah. were multiple bureaucrats and multiple you know, uh, school bureaucrats who were in the sort of the vestibule area of the, the lunchroom or the, the cafeteria who were pleading with us to, <laughs> to not go out there. And we did anyway. And they, you know, they didn't physically try to detain us. But then again, there weren't any cops there. So it would have been interesting to see how the police would have behaved towards us had we encountered them as we left uh, said cafeteria. But we'll tell you more about what happened here in moments. 855 450 free. Police states could be coming to your town soon. It's Free Talk Live. Attention, business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free to bring up what you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. In fact, uh, something else that we like here at Free Talk Live is alternative currency. We love Bitcoin and also gold and silver, because before Bitcoin, there was gold and silver for many, many hundreds of years, and gold and silver will continue on uh, even on probably after Bitcoin is done with, if Bitcoin ever does fail. Gold and silver, I, I'm a fan. I've got some, and you can have some as well by going to silver.freetalklive.com. That'll hook you up with Midas Resources, where they have some hand-picked gold and silver pieces. Plus, you can even get the uh, what they call the 90% silver stuff there as well, like the silver dimes from pre, was it 1965, I yeah. believe it is? So Coin they, silver, they call it. Yeah, they've got some great uh, products over at Midas Resources, but you want to enter through silver.freetalklive.com. That way, they know that we sent you. Or you can call them at 877-857-9938. That's toll-free, 877-857-9938 for Midas Resources. Or go to silver.freetalklive.com. All right, so we're talking about this situation of a school lockdown that occurred today at the Keene, uh, not, uh, not the high school. There's, they've done a lockdown with the high school in the past, and I'll come back to that here in a moment, uh, because what happened today was very, very similar to something that happened actually about two years ago here in Keene. Uh, but they locked down the college after a, some sort of a domestic dispute during the daytime today, this, this morning, where a man allegedly shot a gun into the air for the purposes of trying to, I guess, get his girlfriend's attention or something like that. They were in the midst of a fight. He was mad and, and stuff. He was mad, and maybe she was mad too. And anyway, somebody witnessed this. The police were called. And then subsequently— She wasn't mad before he shot, fired a gun off in the air. She was mad after it. Subsequently, uh, the college campus was shut down. Well, myself and other liberty activists happened to be on that college campus at that time. So uh, we finished up our breakfast, and we didn't rush to do it. We just sort of you know, finished at our own pace and then— went out to see what was going on. Um, and that was actually right around the time when they ended up capturing the guy. So we actually heard over the, uh, the, the two-way that the suspect had been captured, but nobody in the lockdown situation was aware of that at that point. So we walked out of the cafeteria, despite the bureaucrats trying to stand in our way, sort of, or at least trying their best to dissuade us from leaving. You know, I forget exactly what the lady said, but it was something like, can I please have you stay here? And I said something to the effect of, no thanks, I'm fine, and just, you know, have a nice day. And we walked out. And at that point, uh, we were parked in different areas, so I actually split up and ended up walking alone. I did have my video camera out at this point. And, uh, you know, let the other guys know, hey, I've got my two way on, so need to can contact one another. And they walked off. I went off. And it was interesting walking around this campus because hardly anyone was was out. There was nobody else around. Uh, I didn't see any police. And what I did see was that there were bureaucrats, school staff that were at every single door on the buildings that I was walking by. So one of them was a gym building, and there's a side door, and there's like two or three bureaucrats standing there. 
And then there's another, you know, door, the the main door to the gym building where there are a few bureaucrats standing there as well. And Outside of the door? No, on the just on the inside. But okay. these are glass doors. There's no metal right. whatsoever. They're just glass doors. Operation Human Shield, man the doors. Yeah. And so they're just staring Operation, at me. Operation Professor Bullet Catcher. <laughs> <laughs> They're just staring at me as I'm walking by, looking just bewildered. That, you know, <laughs> who, who you can't be out there, right? You, you should be behind a glass door. Yeah. There's a shooter out there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in situations like this, where people you know sort of re- really bow to authority, and I'm not saying that this was the the wisest idea that Ian's ever had, but um. In situations like this, they're never sure whether the person has authorization, because authorization is what ta- is tantamount <laughs> here, right? Like Ian could have been the uh, project manager of the police, and this he just happens to be in, in civilian clothes. They don't know, right? Or he they're could like, be the shooter. What? That could be. Who? Yeah. Huh? You know, they just don't know. Which is the risk in breaking this lockdown, right? To right. you know, to walk out onto the school campus with this you know active shooter lockdown situation and then encounter uh, police right. could be dangerous to right. your health. And then you point your camera at them; they think it's a scope, and right. down goes Ian. So that's Make why for I'm, some great video, though. That's why I'm saying that <laughs> well, if, I, if they ever recover it. That's why I'm saying this would have been interesting to see what happened if we actually did encounter the police because. My suggestion here is that maybe one of these lockdowns is nothing more than a strong suggestion uh, in that, you know, they essentially were like, for instance, in the uh, let's see, it was Boston uh, where they, you know, the Boston bombing happened and they were going around house to house uh, demanding people leave their homes. And of course, one of my big questions was, what if you refused uh, to leave the home that you live in, that, you know, you feel safe in, that you would like to stay in? You know, what if you refuse that? Obviously, if you refuse to talk to them and you don't even show your face at the door, they're probably not going to kick the door in at that point. They'd but have kicked you, a lot of doors in because there's a lot of homes that were unoccupied. People were at work. People were away yeah. on vacation. People were just not, you know. Which in that case just shows you how hard they're actually looking for the guy. They're just <laughs> they're just terrorizing the people who are stupid enough to talk to them is <laughs> right. really what that, that boiled down knock, to. Knock, knock. Do you have any terrorists in there? Yeah. And I did. I, I think I heard of people who, uh, you know, told them no and... And were like removed from the house. Uh, well, they were pointing guns at people, so I can understand why uh, you know somebody would feel very persuaded to go ahead and do what they wanted to. Yeah, I mean, somebody shows up at your house, points a gun at you, and then says, "Please step outside." <laughs> you know, but what I'd like a- to see is, I'd like to see it happen on video. I'd like to see somebody. You know, it didn't happen, but I would have loved to have seen someone tell the police, "Nope, I would prefer to stay right here, and uh, you don't have uh, a warrant." You don't have the right to search my house, and that didn't happen. I, I saw I saw at least one video where uh, the 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 audio that w- the video picked up was of these people screaming and terrified as police like moved them out of the house. Now I didn't. Th- this was from across the street. You didn't see what happened at the door or anything right. like that. But I saw a video that was taken from across the street from one of these houses during the Boston thing, uh, Watertown thing. And this was a, a situation where the police were absolutely, like, m- removing people from a house and they were screaming and terrified. So, um, anyway, going back to my point here is that I can't really say for sure this is the case, but at least it's the case with the bureaucrats at the school was this was just a strong suggestion. We were able to leave this place that was supposedly locked down. Yeah. And I wonder... You know what would have happened to, you know, if the police were there. We didn't get to find that out. Thankfully, I guess nobody got shot because of that. But at the same time, would the police have behaved differently? Would the police have threatened us with disorderly conduct if we didn't get back into uh, the room or the the building in which you know we were supposedly locked? I down I kind of doubt that they would have. What I what I suspect would have happened is you know if there were KPD and they recognized you, they'd probably leave it alone. If they didn't recognize you and they don't know who this shooter is, I mean they're probably going to point guns at you and tell you get on the ground and mm. you know try to figure out who you are. If they're in the process of looking for a guy who has already fired a weapon. I don't imagine that they're going to be exactly polite to the people they come in contact with in an area that they've told to lock down. Right. Well, I mean, this uh, t- to some extent, um, the the police state has been cheered on by the the average individual. Sure. Um, you know, the, the the whole thing here with the 
uh, keen state uh, riots that went on during Pumpkin Fest, the vast majority, I haven't heard one person bes- who's not in sort of the, your little, our little inside Liberty click thing um, that has said, well, yeah, I think the police did a pretty crappy job with handling the uh, the, the Keene State riot. Well, you didn't talk to the college students, obviously. No, but yeah, no, well, you mean that. You mean the normals around Keene right. or Well, whatever. the normals don't like the college students. The college students have spent most of their time being drunk and disorderly. All right, we'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts on the rise of the police state here. It's Free Talk Live. Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free. 
855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. Have you ever been in a police lockdown situation and walked out? Uh, you know, just left the lockdown? I'd love to hear from you. That's what uh, some of the activists did here in Keene, New Hampshire today as the police locked down supposedly a campus, a college campus that some of us happened to be on at the time. And we were able to just sort of mosey on out of there. I did the exact opposite. The Keene State riots, they were like, get out of here. And I was like, all right, what a good video. (laughs) Well, right. I mean, it was sort of related to what happened with the Keene State riots as well, because after uh, after the riots had pretty much ended, uh, this was during the Pumpkin Fest last year. It made international headlines. Um, but after the riots had pretty much ended that night, the police were blocking off certain portions of one of the streets near the college. And I was easily able to circumvent their their blocks. I mean, I literally walked you know one building length away from them, cut around down behind that building, and then came right out on the same street they were supposedly blocking off. Then I proceeded to walk openly down that very street that was being blocked off, walk past multiple other police officers who didn't say boo to me about, hey, you can't be here. So, like, they just set up these arbitrary boundaries <laughs> and... Well, and the other, the, the funny thing during the, the KSC riots was sort of like, they're like, get out of here, get out of here, but those those blocks like intimidate me from leaving right like when we did ultimately leave like i felt like i had to sneak off the campus like i didn't want to like walk into the police they're the ones throwing tear gas at us right i i'm not exactly anxious to go like get into a confrontation with these guys when i do ultimately decide to leave so uh, if you've got any experience with you know sort of disobeying the uh, the police's arbitrary boundaries at certain locations please let us know at 855 450 free the article is up over at freekeen.com about the police major overreaction today uh this morning in keen and we'll continue here there's a little bit more to say about it but first let's go to david in panama uh florida panama city i presume david you're on free talk live yeah it's actually lynn haven i live outside of panama city beach all right welcome go ahead sir um yeah because i think what uh You know, with what's happened down here on spring break over the last couple of years and stuff, um, you know, uh, I'm sure you've heard the news stories and everything about what's happened here. What's happened? What do you mean? uh, Spring break parties? With the the shootings and the, you know, the crowds getting out of control and police having to come in. Because there's been seven shit. There's been one part. One guy went into a house party and shot seven people. Whoa, it's a pretty big deal. And, and there's been, yeah, and it's been it's been all over the country, you know, on Fox News, um, on local local news, local news. Here I don't watch on, television news, so I mean, if it doesn't okay, come across, well, my I've, I've seen a few headlines well, in the Google News. I haven't read the stories, but I did hear about some kind of a spring break. Yeah, shooting well, let, let me let you, let me let your listeners know. Um, from, for many of them who don't know, um, spring break here on Panama City Beach has gotten out of control. We've got a lot of these people that have come down here, and it's called the Hunter Mile Club. And all they do, they intermingle with spring breakers. And spring break from 10 years ago is not the spring break we all that that I know of and everything because I work security and all that. And, How has uh, it changed? I mean, 10 years ago, spring breakers were partying in Panama City. What's different yeah, now? Yeah, spring breakers were Fort partying, but spring breakers... Spring breakers weren't going to shoot, weren't going to house parties and getting shot up. Yeah, but up. I mean, one example of there's one house a, party that gets a, shot up been, is, hold on five, a second, David. There's five shootings down here. Five, five shootings? Does that mean five different yes. incidents? Are they related? Yes. No, they're not related. It's but they're all spring breakers. Instances. No, it's not spring breakers. It's the what we call the 100 Mile Club. Okay, so what, what the hell mean? is the 100 Mile Club? The 100 Mile Club is people that live 100 miles away from Panama City Beach. And they come down here and intermingle with the spring breakers, and they come down here to cause trouble. Uh, this is a gang of sorts. Why do people want to come right. from Alabama and go to prison in Florida? It's coming. They're coming from Alabama. They're coming from Georgia. They're coming from Mississippi. From you know. Now, when you say they cause Florida trouble. prisons better, well, now hold on. I mean, are we talking about a gang, or are we just talking about a group of people who likes to come party, and some people consider that to be trouble? And they get out of hand. I mean, because the shootings this year, the shootings this year have gotten way out of control. The crowds that come down here, for a lot of people that don't know this and stuff, 
it's a wolf pack mentality. And it, over the last couple of years that I've worked security and stuff in the clubs and private security for the condos and everything, it's gotten way out of control. I mean, it sounds and like you've got out, a, you've got a situation going on down there. It's uh, almost like a, a Mardi, Mardi Gras type of situation, if you will, that mm-hmm. people are coming from around the country, perhaps even around the world, to come and party. They're getting drunk and they're and they're feeling like, hey, anything goes here. Uh, this is a lawless yeah, place that, where I can just do whatever I want, right? Right, and more or less that's what happened. And basically, the point I'm trying to make is that you know law enforcement has a hard job enough. And stuff, but then when you bring, you know, like, you know, last weekend when they had those seven people get shot at a house party, we've never had that here. And now all of a sudden it's been caught. What was that? I mean, have you learned anything about the motivation behind the shooter in that case? No, nobody knows. Nobody knows the motivation. All I know is he's got seven counts of murder. He's in the Bay County Jail right now. Well, they got the guy, so I mean, that's that's something. Now, let me ask you. He would have done that anywhere, though. what's, Um, What's what's a gun control situation like there? Uh, I mean, you know, it, 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 you know, Florida is an open, you know, Florida is a gun friendly state. Law abiding citizens have the right to defend themselves in their house and their vehicle and everything. But, you know, the all, you know, and they, the uh, sheriff's office confiscated seven illegal guns. For somebody that had no had no business carrying a weapon in the begin in the first place. Well, I mean, you're you're talking about a you're you're describing a situation where you're 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 under the impression that somebody had no business carrying a weapon. So it sounds to me like the problem that you've got going on there is a is a situation where human beings do not fundamentally have a right to protect themselves. If somebody, uh, did you say it's, it's an a open? Thug, it's a it's a thug, it's a thug mentality because people come out here on the beach. And everything, you know, and and a lot of keep people coming down here from Iowa, from Minnesota and stuff going, my God, is it like this all the time? I'm like, no, this does not happen. This only happens spring break. And the fact is, is a lot of people come here. Wow. It's really dark on the streets. Let me let me ask you, though. So wait, is meaning black meaning black people? Okay, so. I, I, wait, is that you, what you're? What are you suggesting? Is that what there? you're um, contending? Is is that it's it tends to be black people coming from Georgia and and Alabama and Mississippi that are causing the trouble? Majority of them, yes. Majority well, of them, yes. I mean, that's well, here's look, what I, it's I'm a told, pattern worth you know what, noticing. Guys, I'm I, not going to knock the guy for saying that. But here's uh, here's what I would like to know: is um, somehow or another, um, New Orleans has managed to deal with party revelers coming there. They've managed to make a living off. New of Orleans it. has a lot of black people in it too. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's it's a relatively <laughs> most of them are peaceful. <laughs> yep, relatively black community there. Um, and somehow they've managed to make it. Is this bad management on the part of uh, Panama City? Yes, it's bad man. It's bad management on the part of our local government what do you want to see change i would like to see people's minds you know not coming down here and the thug mentality the wolf pack mentality like we own we can't we can get away with whatever we want to do it doesn't matter how many people we hurt and everything. Just let us do what we want to do. Well, but you know, you're you're fundamentally describing a situation where hundreds, thousands of people really are are showing up in this place, and you've got a situation where a total of five of them have decided to shoot. Now, there's certainly probably been a lot of other crimes. I, I imagine there's a lot of thefts and sexual assaults. I imagine there's a lot of this stuff is going mm-hmm. on there. And that's going to happen when you have a bunch of drunken Drunk tourists people. in a place. And I don't think that it's entirely unexpected for you to have some uptick in your crime crime rate when that sort of thing goes on and you know if your if your economic benefit is offset that's another question it sounds to me though i don't i don't did, did you say florida is an open carry state it, where somebody it, it, can it, do that without a permit uh you know what hang on we'll uh we'll come back here in a moment the toll free number is 855 450 free 855-450-3733 because you know the government is terrible at controlling these situations as we found out with the pumpkin fest here in Keene right. last year the government agents escalated the uh, the crazy destructiveness of the college students they caused it some could argue there's more coming up it's free talk live 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Pop quiz, kid. You know it's at 3221 Highway 22? The new Dickinson Granger branch. You know it was there before that? Who cares? There's a Granger branch there now. Granger's got everything we need from inventory management to safety services and solutions. They even have this handy mobile app for easy browsing on the go. Let's head over there and stock up. There's nothing I love more than a new Granger branch, kid, including you. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash oil and gas or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800 425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall and Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall and Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now. Mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at Africa. Dot LRN dot FM. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. Africa dot LRN dot FM. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Has the spring break partying gone too far? Shootings apparently happening in the Panama City area in uh, more than one incident. Apparently there was uh, one shooting where a party was shot up and then there were apparently several others. According to David, who's on the line with us here, and I've, I've been looking at some news stories and apparently there have been... You're not looking at news. You're looking at the pictures of the pretty girls You're on right. the beach. And so I looked at I. the news story and then I started looking at the pictures like, of the spring headline, break girls. And I was like, oh, let's go start <laughs> looking at all these pictures. And I can understand why I'm looking at them and they're very beautiful women all over your screen right now. Yeah, so uh, let's bring David back 
back here because he did have uh, – Chris, you had a question for him about guns and being able to defend oneself and open carry. But real quick, I want to tell you about the Pocket Power Plus. It's uh, a source of bat- uh, battery backup power that's so small you can put it in your pocket – or the glove box of your car, but it's so powerful that in some circumstances it can actually jumpstart a car. Uh, This is a great device, and it's a breakthrough in portable power technology. The uh, Pocket Power Plus, you can go to pocketpowerplus9.com to learn a lot more about it. Uh, Whether you're stranded, if you're in an airport, you're in a car, you're away from a source of, uh, you know, plugging into the wall, this thing will keep you going, not just for hours, but even days if you need to. Uh, Pocket Power Plus can also deliver an enormous supply of on-demand power, and it comes with a full accessory pack, which has most of the adapters you'll need to charge your phone, charge your laptop, and even comes with jumper cables. So the best part, you, listeners of Free Talk Live, can get the Pocket Power Plus for half off by going to pocketpowerplus9.com. And then if you use coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live, you'll save even more at pocketpowerplus9.com. And don't forget code FTL. That's pocketpowerplus9.com. So David's back on with us here. Chris, you'd ask the question, can you open carry in florida yeah and it sounds like you can open carry but there is a requirement for a permit in order to conceal david is is that the case from what from what i understand no because i have a class g class d security license and all that i have a uh, permit to carry you know concealed in florida and all that um and from what i understand no florida is not an open carry state yeah that's what i thought i thought that it was not Hmm. an open carry state so i mean you know it sounds to me Whenever whenever you have violence erupting in a place, I always like to ask about the gun control laws of that place because, you know, people who, I don't know, shoot up house parties don't usually care what your carry policy is, right? Yeah, they, it's, it's not that because there was a shooting, you know, a, you know, three weeks ago there was a shooting at Burger King where a kid got shot three times, mm-hmm. and that's what started it all. And then there was a shooting in the Walmart parking lot. And then now there's a shooting at this house party and stuff, and seven people were shot. Now, okay, so— uh, It sounds like gang, gang violence is what yeah. it sounds like. I mean, this could be anything. Yeah, we don't know it, what the motivations are for the shooting, and it doesn't sound like you know either. I mean, it could be somebody owed somebody some money on a drug deal gone bad yeah, or something did, like that. Uh, and that's the thing is I don't understand why in the world that you know these kids have to come down here— and regardless of who they are, what where they come from and everything, why does somebody need to carry a gun just to prove, just to make their point? Well, the, the, thing, the thing that you fundamentally have going on there is that, look, people carry guns everywhere, right? Like there are people in your area who carry guns illegally all the time, right? You should really come to well, terms I, with that. It, it, yeah, that's fine. You know, and if you want to defend yourself, because the laws and everything from <clears throat> this last legislative session and stuff, now you can carry a gun in your car and everything legally to defend yourself and everything. Same reason you should have to defend your house without a permit. You're saying without a permit, it's the same. It carry your your vehicle carries the same laws. This is not legal health. advice. David is not an attorney, right? So, but uh, the thing the thing that I'm fundamentally right. getting at here is that sort of well, that's the state stat. Well, that's the state statute that right. was put into law. What 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 it sounds like to me is that you've got you've got a gun control problem. <laughs> is that if you have a situation where the people in an area are generally aware that the populace is armed, they don't tend to open fire on each other because they're pretty you know they're concerned about getting shot. Yeah, that's right? true. In in the like in in New Hampshire, we have like next to no crime in this place. And then where do you have the big eruption of a riot? Is at Keene State College, where you a can't carry zone. a gun. This is this is sounds to me like the bigger problem than than your your spring break issue. And it also seems to me that you're describing shootings that are happening that are wholly unrelated to spring break, but happening during the during same this period time of time frame. Thank you, David, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. I disagree. I don't. Um, so you, we can look at uh, gun possession numbers around the country and they can they largely appear to be unrelated to 
crime numbers. Now, yes, the gun possession numbers up here in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine are quite good, but that doesn't correlate to the rest of the nation. And what I would uh, con, con, what my conjecture is, is this is drug war, war related. Is that it's probably turf related at some point, and that um, you know the, these are gangs fighting over stuff because gangs know that the other gang members have guns and they don't mind shooting at them, even though they think it's likely that they'll get shot back. Um, and I mean, they also know it's likely they'll go to prison. So they I think it's all of those things. I think it's uh, the fact that you can't open carry. You know, you can't obviously be willing to defend yourself in Florida. Somebody being, you know, someone open carrying can be a very big deterrent to someone committing a crime. They can also be the first target. Well, and and, and and also, uh, while I'm while I happen to be an open carry advocate, I, I I'm a big concealed carry advocate too for for the very reason that then they don't know, right? Like if people don't know if there are guns around, then they are not going to say, "All right, there are no armed people here. Now I can do something bad." Uh, which is sort of one of the arguments that got made at the 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 hearing that we were at in Concord. Not but long most ago. people think that if there's no gun visible, that there's no gun. That's what they seem to think. Well, I, I don't imagine that that's the case for no, people who are in Vermont, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. in Vermont, people don't probably make that assumption. I'll bet you they do. No, well, wait a minute. I mean, we don't know what everybody thinks. No, we don't. But where did I see a headline? I'm sorry I don't remember this. Maybe you guys saw the same thing. It was just a myriad, you know, one of the myriad of Facebook posts I've seen over the last uh, few days. But there was some video of a dude robbing, like, a gas station and, like, his last words to the gas station operator were, I didn't think you could have a gun here. <laughs> it was in some sort of a state with uh, with high levels of gun control or whatever, but obviously this guy did have a, a permit or whatever. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing pointing that gun at me? That's illegal yeah. as I rob you. Um, you and, know. you know, he failed at his robbery attempt uh, because of that. And the dude was surprised that the guy behind the counter had a gun. So I think it is a factor. And, uh, you know, John— It's a, it's a huge factor. Yeah. I mean, I've done— John you know, Russell interviewed criminals in a jail once. I, it was one of his uh, specials that he put together like a decade ago where he talked to these guys and he was like, you know, well, yeah, they, they admitted to him. This is a factor as, as far as how we determine who to rob and where to commit these crimes. Yeah, you, you can commit crimes in New York and not have any fear of getting shot in the process of doing it, right? Like there's a reasonable assumption that the people around you are not armed, Unless right? you happen to rob a gangster, yeah, you're generally going to be uh, pretty exactly. much getting away and, with it. And when gangsters do violence to other gangsters, they don't generally tend to be like, hey, let's meet on the corner of 1st and 7th and we will duel it out. They mm -hmm. tend to try to shoot people in the back of the head and stuff. They're not trying to get themselves into a gunfight, right? These are assassinations usually. So uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think that there's a strong correlation between not gun possession necessarily. Gun possession and people who are capable of carrying a gun are two completely different things. But criminals are acutely aware in the society that they happen to inhabit of uh, whether or not the people around them are able to be armed or not. So I think you, you're both right though like you know people being able to be armed will definitely dissuade people from uh, committing violence but also mark that you're probably right in your speculation that some of this gun violence is drug war related i think that's a fair level of speculation and further i'll go uh, you know just to back to the issue of spring breaks out of control which is what the caller had said earlier it's also a public property issue don't you think i, I mean, was just gonna say that too that you're you know you're talking about you've got the story beaches. up there that the public beach banned alcohol on the beach after there was a shooting at a private home well, if you've got a situation where now you're in tragedy of the commons area where, okay, now we're going to have this common space where people have, you know, rights that have nothing to do with property. And now there's a bunch of people on a piece of property that they don't own and they feel like they're free to just destroy everything. Uh, I, I think that uh, property rights solve a lot of that. This guy said he works private security. I bet he doesn't allow half the the stuff that goes on in that beach to go on in his private club. Right. Private beaches, you can, you know, they pay, they have fences on some private beaches. There are ways to restrict access to a private beach. And if it's an issue with stuff being destroyed, then it's worth hiring security to go out there and to protect that beach and to only allow certain party goers on the beach who are willing to behave in certain manners. So maybe if it wasn't a tragedy for the commons, we wouldn't have uh, some of this craziness. But obviously that's not going to help solve the problem right now, right? Because the Panama City Council certainly is not going to accept the idea of privatizing the beaches. No, they're not looking for that. But what is your solution? Uh, if you've got one, you're welcome to share it with us at 855-450-FREE. Everybody's guy, got a solution to crime. What's yours? Guy who lives in Panama City saying spring break's gone too far. Well, spring break isn't going to end anytime soon. 
you know, and the beach isn't going to go away, so it's going to continue to attract people there. What do you do about this? 855-450 free. There's more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.67 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,192 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $244. Antiwar.com reports one day after Saudi warplanes killed scores of civilians in an attack on a refugee camp in Yemen, the Red Cross has confirmed that the Saudi military is now preventing the delivery of humanitarian aid to the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a. The Red Cross had to land a flight full of medical aid in Djibouti after being informed by the Saudis that they don't have permission to deliver the aid to Yemen, which Saudi Arabia began attacking last week. Red Cross officials say they are still trying to negotiate permission to deliver medical aid to the war-torn country, and they expressed growing alarm at the number of civilians being killed and wounded in the Saudi attacks. The Saudis have thus far appeared ambivalent about the civilian death toll, either shrugging it off as lies of Yemen's Shiite Houthis, or just insisting their military intervention is being done on behalf of the Yemeni people, at least the ones who survive. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports U.S. President Barack Obama on Tuesday vetoed a measure by Republicans in Congress that would have blocked a government labor agency's rules designed to speed up time it takes to unionize workers. The rules would shorten the time period between a union filing a petition to represent workers and an election, from the current median of 38 days to as little as 14. Employers would be required to share workers' names, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses with unions. The National Labor Relations Board 
board adopted the rule last year and they are set to take effect April 14th. The Senate and House of Representatives, voting along party lines, approved a resolution this month that would have stopped enactment of the rules. On Tuesday, Obama followed through on a threat to reject the resolution, saying the rules represented modest changes that would make it easier for workers to unionize. The labor board still faces court challenges in Washington, D.C. and Texas over the new process from business groups who say it violates the National Labor Relations Act by not giving employers enough time to prepare for elections. The NLRB and Democrats who support the rules say they are designed to rein in misconduct by a minority of employers who draw out union election processes in order to threaten and intimidate workers. An NRLB spokeswoman declined comment on Obama's rejection of the resolution. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports Arizona Governor Doug Ducey signed a controversial bill requiring physicians to inform women who are receiving medically induced abortions that the procedure can be reversed. The Republican governor says he is defending the right to life. He is a known pro-life advocate, and opponents of the bill state the claim that a procedure to reverse drug-induced abortions is not supported by medical science. The new law also prevents women from acquiring health care plans that include coverage for abortion from the federal marketplace unless for instances of rape and incest. Ducey said in a statement, The American people overwhelmingly oppose taxpayer-funded abortions. It's no different in Arizona, where we have a long-standing policy against subsidizing them with public dollars. The new bill was supported by the conservative Center for Arizona Policy, which is led by Ducey supporter and lobbyist Kathy Herod. Bill opponent Senator Kathy Hobbs said that medical malpractice due to the use of unsupported techniques to reverse abortions can result result in birth defects. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. From the day an ancient cave dweller painted yet another f***ing elk hunt on a wall in 15,000 B.C., to Gary Marshall's 1974 discovery of 13 weather-beaten North Dakotan coal miners that would go on to become the cast of Happy Days, The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On June 17, 1954, the effects of the previous month's historic Supreme Court ruling in Brown versus the Board of Education provided black students with the educational opportunity of experiencing racism firsthand in desegregated schools. Up until that point, African-American pupils could only endure racial slurs and death threats in city streets or near their homes. And on June 24, 1784, 13-year-old Edward Warren took the first hot air balloon flight becoming the first American to urinate on a crowd from 100 feet in the air. And that was what happened this week in history. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Has spring break gone too far? That's what uh, one caller was suggesting last hour. Uh, where in Panama City, there has now been a ban on alcohol on the beach as a result of uh, some of the rowdy behavior by the revelers, which isn't unusual for Panama City. I mean, anybody who's ever paid attention to spring break in the past knows that for uh, as long as I've been alive and paying attention to the news, that there have been people partying in large number on the beach in Florida at various different uh, cities and presumably they're getting drunk and some drunk people are going to cause damage to things. So, I mean, there have always been problems with spring breakers. It's just that I guess this year 
there happened to be some shootings that coincided with spring break, so now people feel like things are worse than ever. Maybe people are a little rowdier than ever, but it really, I mean, how much more rowdy uh, can a bunch of college students be in the year 2015 versus, you know, 2005 versus I think, 1995? I think they could be considerably more rowdy. I mean, I, I do think that we have an ever, ever worsening moral decay in human society that people are basically... Uh, it's it's nihilism run amok that people well, don't what think you were, that there's you were saying before the show you think the human race is doomed is that what you're yeah, getting at i mean yes in in that's part of what i was getting at with that is that basically i i fundamentally feel like human society is absolutely unraveling before our eyes is is and i've sort of felt that way like sort of for a while right i mean sort okay. of sort of my moving here was okay well we're gonna get this group of people here to who will live by this certain standard and we will basically be the people who survive this nonsense right mm -hmm. um and <clears throat> there are times when i come to question that and then yeah, like last night i decided i was going to catch up on my molyneux and he's got a video uh it's titled uh, an atheist apologizes to christians and then i see stefan molyneux uh tears in his eyes uh giving praise to the to the christian faith and and the and the latter day saints in particular with a caller that he's got on the line really and i'm saying to myself and he's supposedly an atheist oh yeah and he still is like he's not saying like hey you know J jesus is real and everybody should endorse this right okay. he's just talking about sort of like uh if you will sort of the positive impacts that religion has had on society and that sort of thing and there was a the 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 context of it was that the caller uh, was afraid to tell his family that he was an atheist because it was going to break up his family. Now, I could sort of see if uh, Stefan had said to the guy, hey, look, maybe the lesser evil is to keep this a secret. Like, I could almost get that. Okay. But, Discretion being the better part of valor. Right. And... You know, because Stefan's thing is also very family oriented, right? So if it's going to tear your family apart, then you know, hey, there's there's a you know conflicting values here, right? And I could have dealt with that, but it turned into this bizarre, like tear filled praise for the Christian faith and all the good that it had done for human society, which is the complete opposite of what I'm used to hearing from Stefan Molyneux on mm. religion. And I'm sitting there like. What am I watching? Like, I'm watching this happen on Free Domain Radio, and it goes along with certain other things. I've been complaining about a lot of other libertarians. You know, you get Larkin Rose screaming about rape culture and the patriarchy. I've got, I've got <laughs> Jeffrey Tucker talking about a new libertarianism that's going to embrace feminism like anti-slavery. And I just see, like, all this bizarre, weird stuff going on in libertarianism, right? Mm. And particularly here in New Hampshire, right? The... the, the the, the people are trying to make this uh, about left liberal social values and polyamory and feminism and all of this weird, ridiculous stuff. And I'm saying to myself, you know what? The human race is doomed. <laughs> like, there's really no fixing this. And then but I'll just add to this, and then I'll, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. So then we started talking about this guy, Jeremiah True, who got himself kicked out of a humanities class at, at, Reed, Univer at Reed College. And one of the things that he was challenging in this class was that logic being more important than emotion is a patriarchal belief. Now, that is very interesting. Now, I started looking into this, Mark. I started reading blogs that said this stuff, and it sent me down this bizarre rabbit hole of yeah. just chaotic, ridiculous thought, you know? And I'm like, I'm realizing that we're trying to talk about issues on this show, right? Mm -hmm. And what I'm realizing more and more is that human beings do not fundamentally agree on like the ontological structure of reality itself. <laughs> we live mm -hmm. in a place where, where people are not sure if the world actually exists. They are not sure. You, you know, can't prove it does. And, and <laughs> we can't agree on like fundamental things like this table is actually here. And I'm like, how are we supposed to discuss anything <laughs> if we don't yeah. agree on like the structure of reality? in the universe we're trying to discuss what's going to happen with nuclear bombs <laughs> we're well, trying to discuss things like i don't know well let's abolish the state and then decide how people are going to privately own nuclear weapons and we can't figure out if there's a table in this room <laughs> okay so th that is uh, 
that is, uh, it, it's, as far as I'm concerned, there is far too much attention paid to crazy people, right? Like, the internet, sadly, gives crazy people a platform for which they can be, uh, you know, get some, some level of attention. The fact is that most people, the vast, vast majority, uh, 99 plus percent of people believe in the, uh, you know, the same ontological objectivist view of the world. Ian no, will don't. trot out this bull crap about, um, you can't prove we're here, you know, but he believes it because he gets in a car and he can drive it away. Like a person who didn't really believe they were in here couldn't, you know, figure out to stick the key in the ignition and turn it and all these other variety of things. Now, there are a small percentage of people um, out there. If they're a bigger percentage than I think you're giving them credit for. Uh, I'm, so you're saying instead of one hundredth of one percent, they're one well, tenth of one percent? So the the thing is that a lot of the beliefs that people have, right, like we, we talk about some of the, like this this feminism stuff that drives me out of my mind. I'm like this is fundament, This is a fundamental departure from the real situation and here is the evidence to say otherwise and people are like, well I just choose to believe something which is false. And I mean that's been going on with religions for thousands of years. Years, right. I mean, mm -hmm. we fundamentally but have we've to made understand. It. We've made it this far even, with religion. <laughs> even a religious person, even a religious person has to understand that most religious people are completely nuts, right? That most, and if somebody believes that they have the one true faith, right, then they still have to accept that most of the rest of the world is completely wrong about religion. So I'd say that, like, throughout most of human history, there has been a fundamental split with reality that people really appreciate and like need like they have to have it they they feel like this is very important to their identity is to fundamentally depart from this physical world and imagine that something else is there and that it is in fact more important than what's going on in this physical world hmm. and that's a situation that is constant it's a miracle that we're still alive if you think about it under those conditions right because sure. we're talking about a situation where people who are fundamentally departed from reality are walking into voting booths and democratically electing governments that hold nuclear weapons now we talk about the abolition of the state so the other thing that stefan said dur during this video was if i could push a button that would abolish the church i would not push it nor the state Okay. What? Right. We're not ready for freedom, uh. is what I hear Stephen Molyneux say on Freedom Main Radio. The video is a couple of weeks old, I think, and I just watched it yesterday. And I'm like, what? I'm a button pusher. I would yeah. blister my thumb <laughs> pushing a button to a button. I don't think Mark would do it. Church I don't think State. I would either. And I don't care. Like, if honestly, I would, if, I, if I pushed a button to, you know, uh, abolish the state and somebody said, don't push that button, there's a p chance that it will cause the extinction of mankind. I'm like, I'll take my chances with yeah. it, pal, because I'm Look, pretty the sure argument, the state's going to be our extinction. So the argument generally is that you can't push the button, this whole we're not ready thing yet, is that, well, if you push the button, people are just going to create another state. And as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. If that's what they want to go ahead and do, at the very least, we'd have zero state from which to start, and then it's going to take them a little while while to build a well, state as large as the one that we have today so states, i'd rather have that thanks very much push the damn button states vary on a level from uh hong kong to north korea and from mm -hmm. uh you know denmark to north korea again right i'm talking yeah. about the social and the economic scales here so you may very well get a state that is as bad as North Korea's, right? Because there's a lot of people out there that say you got to break a few eggs in order to make an omelet. And, uh, yeah. you know, in the case where the state is gone, what we need right now is law and order more than we need living people, right? So if half the population has to die for me to set up this new state that's going to be, uh, you know, work better than the old well, one. Then obviously, we're talking about a ridiculous uh, what if scenario. That's but, why know, I'm not ready to push the since button. Since we're talking about that scenario. Uh, the idea would be the state would disappear, Mark. So how would you start up a state, uh, you know, a, a larger state the next day? You wouldn't have the ability because you wouldn't have the legitimacy. No one would want to necessarily follow Guns. you. There's more coming up. It's Free Talk Live. His hair was falling out in clumps. Our golden retriever, Sundance, he scratched incessantly. Mounds and mounds of fur all over the place. Our hairballs have hairballs. Olive was suffering like a dog. She was itching, she was scratching, she was licking 24 hours a day. Just chewing and chewing and chewing. So. Scratching and, and biting. Bloody my shih tzu's itching problem, constantly licking his feet. It keeps me up at night. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. 
flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa, the digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The shedding slowed down to almost none. The scratching went away after a few days. Tons of energy, no more bad smell. The shedding has stopped and the itching has stopped. Sleep at night. Oh, let me do it again. Sleep at night. Get your dog some Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. dot com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Congressman Hanford. You're married, two beautiful children, and yet you texted nude photographs to a 23-year-old staffer. Why did you do it? I wanted her to see my penis. I was hoping the penis photo would arouse her sexually, uh, that she might think, that's a nice penis. I will respond with an offer to have sex with the penis or maybe send a photo of my breasts. I would like that. And that's what I was hoping would happen. Here's what intrigues so many people. Why would a promising, successful politician take such a big risk? I knew I could let down my family, destroy my marriage, and damage the country that I love. But on the other hand, if there's even the small chance of getting off at any time, you got to take it. The big question, do you plan to resign? No, I'm very good at my job. Plus, it's a lot harder to get women to have sex with you when you're not a congressman. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 you can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free to bring up what you want here at 855 450 free. Or join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And you can still comment on the Panama City spring break situation where some people are saying it's gone too far. But you can't abolish spring break and you're not going to get the beach to go away. So how do you handle this uh, with parties going out of control? Uh, we had a security guy who does security for a living saying that he's seen it change. It's gotten even worse over the years. Uh, so you're welcome to comment on that as well, or jump into the conversation that we're having right now about uh, what, you know, Chris Cantwell is upset, uh, which is sort of the standard uh, for Chris <laughs> Cantwell. But you're like really like kind of bummed out right now. I want to get back into that. You're frustrated with uh, the liberty movement, people in general. You say that the human race is doomed. Uh, so this is a pretty big topic. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, whether or not the human race is doomed... In the meantime, until we get to the doomsday or whatever the heck it is, it's going to happen. 
yeah, you still have internet access for now. And uh, you need to protect yourself when you're online. You probably should do that because whether or not the human race is doomed, there are people out there who are looking to take advantage of you. And uh, some of those people are in governments. And so ProXPN can help protect you online. You can go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, download their app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android devices. And then once you, uh, once you connect to ProXPN, you'll be protected from some of the prying and spying going on out there, like your ISP. Uh, for instance, they're probably keeping track of and logging all of the websites you visit, all the search terms that you enter. Maybe they want to sell that information. Maybe they want to give it away to the government. Who knows? But if you're using ProXPN, they don't get that information anymore because, again, your internet will become encrypted. And uh, that also protects you from other things. But plus, once you get their premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN doesn't keep Keep records of your online habits at all. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and you get it at 50% off when you use code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50 as in 50% off the annual account over at ProXPN.com slash FTL. That breaks the price down to just under $5 a month for this amazing protection. ProXPN.com slash FTL code FTL50. 50. As we continue here, we've actually got Virgil on the line with us calling from Ohio, I presume. Virgil, are you there? I am here. Ian, thank you for taking my call. How are you tonight? Oh, well, just fine. Uh, we're talking about a variety of different things, but actually I'd asked you to call in uh, tonight. So we're going to come back to Chris Cantwell yeah. uh, and his concerns with the human race here in a moment. <laughs> uh, but Virgil, you've got some pretty, you got a pretty serious situation there in Xenia, Ohio, where you were arrested for so-called panhandling, even though the law itself defines panhandling as trying to ask people for, or, you know, asking people for money for your own personal benefit. You were asking people for money as you stood out in front of the, I think it was what the police department in City Hall. Right. You were asking people for money for a local charity, and they arrested you and charged you with panhandling. And even though you pointed this out during the trial, the jury found you guilty anyway. Right. Of course. And you were they're, sentenced they're, yesterday. Yeah, Go they're ahead. obedient, uh, little obedient status. They are going to obey whatever the judge tells them. And my sentencing was yesterday. The judge basically sentenced me to 30 days in jail. It's a suspended sentence for two years, which means they're going to hang this thing over my head for two years, limiting my activism and whatever uh, other activities I'm involved in. That's what they do to Ian. And that's right. And then he also uh, fined me 150 bucks, about another $750 worth of court fees, and then 100 hours of community service. So actually, in total, the sentence goes above the maximum required by law under this charge. <laughs> what was the maximum? The maximum only allows for a fine and 30 days in jail. So community service was not specified nope. as an option. No. And uh, and also there's court costs as well. That's what seven hundred dollars, about seven hundred and fifty bucks or so. Yeah. And interestingly Jeez. enough, the judge, uh, you you know, they lie, right? When when someone starts a, a sentence with, uh, well, I'm not going to punish you for this, but <laughs> you know, uh, so he basically said that uh, you know he admired you know the fact that I represented myself pro se and. You know, I, pre I presented myself professionally, and, and by no means will the sentence uh, illustrate the fact that I'm being punished for exercising my constitutional rights to represent myself. Except that they departed above the sentencing guidelines. Right, right. It's, it's funny. It's and this is a, by the way, this is a municipal ordinance violation we're talking about here. Right. I mean, this isn't even state law. This is just something that the town of Xenia or the city of Xenia bureaucrats, uh, the politicians, wrote up to try to, you know, in theory, stop people from, uh, from panhandling there in the yep. streets. So all you did, and how long were you standing out in front of the uh, police department? Because you were able exactly. to raise like 40 bucks. Yeah, I was there exactly about an hour and 35 minutes or so. I looked at the clock, yeah. and I raised about 42 bucks. It was donated to charity. I have a letter from the charity stating I Thank gave you. them money. Right. Yeah. They said they were going to buy socks and underwear for homeless people with it. The judge didn't let me introduce the letter as evidence. No, why would they? During that the would, trial. That would somehow get in the way of his little friends that he plays golf with, uh, you know, ra right. railroading you down the, the pike here for a crime that you clearly didn't commit. Um, it would, right, it, it, right. I mean, so, uh, the jury was uh, – the, and the jury is just so – 
ready to go home that they collude with these people. Of course. Let me ask you, so you were allowed to tell the jury that you gave the money to the charity, but you weren't allowed to bring the letter as evidence? Yes. Yes. That's so bizarre. Right. He also <laughs> couldn't bring up the Constitution uh, well, in the Well, you courtroom. can never bring up a Constitution at a trial. That's not... Right, uh, you know that's uh, that's fundamentally something that they don't, uh, they don't like allow that. you to yeah. do. I mean, those are for legal arguments. They don't want you making legal arguments to a jury, and that's not abnormal at all. At least we can say that it's a terrible thing that the constitutions are not welcome in courtrooms anymore. But it's not it's not fundamentally like a strange thing that they've done to him. You know. But, but where do you bring up the constitution? Though, what case do you have to be in to where he can actually talk about it? You you that's an it's a legal argument that's made before a judge and that's that's where you do that so if you were say let's say that you felt that you had been illegally searched or something like that your your attorney will usually like raise a motion to have a hearing on before the judge on whether or Got not it. what was done was legal in the first place having you're never allowed to make legal arguments to a jury that's something that happens in courtrooms all across the world that's totally that's normal. insane yeah but they that's wouldn't insane. even let him bring up the constitution as in you know that was his motivation or whatever i, I mean you can talk about a constitution in front of a jury at least here in new hampshire i believe that that is possible here as you're as right. if you're if you're talking about uh, your motivation for doing something as you're testifying then yeah. you can you i i would think that in a lot of cases that would be allowed but like if uh, as if like if you're a pro se defendant and you're saying well it's unconstitutional that this happened you're fundamentally trying to make a legal argument and that's not right. something that you do with a jury and and that's a good point. I did not testify. I, I did not want to testify, yeah. so uh, oh. obviously I didn't get to talk about a lot of yeah, it. Yeah, so the rules so. the rules for what you're allowed to say as your own, you know, you represent yourself, right? You yeah. have certain rules that apply to you like you're an attorney, right? Your attorney yeah. is not allowed to give testimony, right? Correct. So right. so you you as you as a pro se defendant, uh, you do end up with a little bit of leeway to say things to the jury, but fundamentally they want to be able to question you if you're giving testimony. And so unless you take the stand they're going to limit what you say all right more coming up right. here in moments our uh, toll-free number is 855 450 free virgil can you stick around for a little more of this absolutely all right i've absolutely. got more questions uh, virgil paduva independent uh, photo journalist in uh, the xenia ohio area we'll come back with more of him and his situation he's been sentenced for raising money for charity in front of city halls free talk live we live in a complicated society stressful issues are always popping up have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. 
Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippie! On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course you can bring up what you want here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Chris Cantwell says the human race is doomed. Uh, We'd love to hear what you think about that. We'll, of course, get to your calls about anything you want to discuss. We've got Virgil uh, Viduva on the line with us from the Greene County Herald in Ohio. He's uh, explaining to us the sentencing that he went through yesterday for his first uh, criminal conviction for the dastardly crime of standing out in front of City Hall and asking people for money for a charity. We're going to continue with Virgil here in a moment. Uh, But first, you should know about ExpressCoin.com, the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies of choice. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, they're all available at ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. Plus, they're a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrency with money order, check, or wire transfer. Just get started over at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the United States or in Canada, they can help you over at ExpressCoin.com. Plus, you can even grab their app for your smartphone. Use coupon code FTL when you're ready to uh, check out there to get up to $40 worth of your favorite cryptocurrency with no fee at all. That's ExpressCoin.com with coupon code FTL, ExpressCoin.com. As we go back to Virgil Vaduva with us, uh, thanks for calling in tonight, Virgil. I, we had the news story from, counter, from CounterCurrent News. I posted that on our Facebook and Twitter uh, just a moment ago, and they did a good job of, of covering this, and, and thankfully you've been calling in to kind of give it to us uh, firsthand here. Now, did you go there uh, prepared to court yesterday morning? Because I suggested, you know, you might want to go prepared for jail. Were you ready? yeah. yeah. No, I mean, how can you be ready to go to a cage? I've never been in jail. Well, I was arrested once for, and I was I spent maybe two or three hours in jail. But how do you prepare mentally to go to jail for thirty days? I'm, you're never ready for that, right? But I, it wasn't the best. Well, if you've been once, mind. then uh, to be yeah. honest with you, you're prepared. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you, know, do it, you do it three, four times. You get used to it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I remember when you I was in jail, there was one yeah, of the that's, guys that's who'd been a... in and out. You know, like a lot of these guys just keep coming in and oh, out. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this guy came yeah. in and he goes, honey, I'm home. <laughs> it's been totally institutionalized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's great. That's so, funny. I, I don't think it's something I want to be prepared for, right? No, yeah, that's, I understand. But, that's a good um, mental state to be in, sir. <laughs> right, right. So, so it was good. I showed up. A handful of friends were there. It unfolded exactly. As I as I was planning, you know, I, I had this entire thing planned for you know from a, a month ago or whenever it started two months ago, and so far the city bureaucrats they've done exactly what I wanted them to do. 
because now uh, I already have an attorney who's a constitutional uh, expert. You know, mm -hmm. he agreed to take the case on. Oh, great. He called me this morning. He, yeah, he said after less than an hour of research, he said, hey, I found already two, uh, two uh, case law cases, uh, you know, in 6th District, which covers Ohio, which covers your case. We don't even have to, to argue the constitutionality of panhandling statutes. This is a slam dunk. So, um, so what did he find there? I mean, tell me a little more about of, that. There are two cases. One is from Lansing, Michigan, uh, where the ACLU filed a lawsuit against the city of Lansing uh, for a law that has been on the books since the 1920s, banning uh, begging. And they won that case. And uh, there's another case from actually last year. And I can't remember the details of that second case. Both found the statutes, uh, panhandling statutes, unconstitutional. Nice. And uh, this makes my case even easier to deal with. And and he's he suggested. I mean, his own words were basically, "The city will beg you to settle with them." <laughs> so, um, so I don't know right. where this, this is going to to end up. The with, city you bans know, begging, uh, and then we'll beg you to settle. <laughs> that would be fun, <laughs> <laughs> right? So uh, it will definitely involve some uh, some money, you know, changing hands, and uh, and definitely. You know, I was joking around, what would the settlement terms include? And I was saying maybe the judge, judge could put on a gimp suit and do a little dance in front of the, of the courthouse for me. You know, that, well, would, uh, that uh, would be a nice settlement. I, I think that so. you should uh, look at uh, tits for tats on this one as best you can. <laughs> and, uh, oh, the judge is female, isn't it? Isn't uh, the, the judge? Uh, never mind. I didn't mean that exactly as I, uh, as I meant. What, what I'm suggesting here is, is that you have the judge um, and the prosecutor and, uh, you know, maybe everybody in the jury has to do 100 hours community service. Isn't that what they that sentenced you to? Yeah, that would be yeah, wonderful. That's I what I want to see. I want to see the stinking prosecutor out there rubbing tires on the fire truck. I'm <laughs> sick and tired of these disgusting bureaucrats getting away with you know, just hiding behind their jobs. When you right. violate the law, I don't care who you work for, you should have to pay the punishment. And these right. people Not sentenced you. They broke the law to sentence you, and they should have to do a 100 hours community service. Great idea, but, but it won't happen. They won't. They, you know, the whatever they pay, whether it's ten thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars in in legal penalties or settlement fees, that would not come out of their paychecks. You'll come out of. Well, fortunately, the jurors are going to pay for it because they're all residents of, of the city, and you know they're kind of responsible for it in some indirect way. So. Well, the jurors, That's, in that, at that point, I mean, you know. The, the jurors are definitely responsible for, you know, course. for you being found guilty, which is what they did illegally, uh, right. ignoring the definition of panhandling, which you did not violate. Yeah, the jurors protest. will get what they deserve, but they'll only get a small portion of what they deserve. So they, right. if, you know, I don't know how many people are in Xenia, but when you spread out $100,000 over however many households. 25,000 people, yeah. yeah 25,000 people, you're talking about everybody kicking in four bucks. The There's jurors would be like happily say, here's $4. <laughs> Let me go home. This is a stupid, crazy case. That's what they right. would have been. But really, ultimately, this, uh, you know, I think it's the judge and the prosecutor. And you should, in my opinion, make the offer whenever you you guys are haggling over what that's going to be. Is, is like, look, I'm willing to waive all of the money I would get as long as the judge and the prosecutor have to do 100 hours community service <laughs> each. I'm willing to waive for the city of Xenia. If these people actually care about the citizens of Xenia, they will go out there and they will rub dirty tires on fire trucks for 100 hours. But they don't. I, I think that suggestion. that's a great thing to say on the radio. I also think that he's going to be better off with a five or six figure sum of money in his pocket <laughs> yeah. than he is going yeah. to be with the video of the prosecutor doing uh, <laughs> doing some trash pickup on Very the highway. True. Very true. Yes. So, Virgil, um, right now you've been sentenced. So when uh, does this judge want that community service to be done by? So he wants it done by, I think, is, is July 1st, from what I remember. I could have the date a little bit off. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have three months or so, to, to, which is a lot. 100 hours is a lot of it's time a lot. when you really think about it. So he really kind of you know, nailed me there. Do you think that um, uh, now, okay, so there's also a $150 fine as well. When does he want that? Also by July? He wants, that has to be paid by tomorrow. So Whoa. tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, okay. actually they wanted it paid right immediately after the sentencing. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this, guys. Uh, they want the court fees and the fine paid tomorrow. What I'm going to do, I'm going oh to pay the court fees. I'm not going, going to haggle with them over the court fees, but I will file a motion to see if he'll let me uh, make a donation instead of a fine and see how what that What happens in Ohio if you don't pay a fine? Because here in New Hampshire, they will put you in jail for $50 a day, and you have to essentially sit it off and or work it off on a labor crew. 
That's a rough question. I, I don't think I want to find out, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, but but I will make at least an offer and see what he's willing yeah, to do. With I it. mean, I don't. I'm not suggesting you just you know throw yourself to the wolves just to see what the system does to you. Yeah. Right. Uh, but you know, I'd be interested in in finding out from other people who have been in yeah, that don't circumstance. Don't find out the hard way, but find out. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. You know, I don't know how far that goes. I think Massachusetts has a similar provision of, uh, you know, you can sit it off, kind of sit off part of the fine. Um, but I don't know how far that goes beyond New England. It, it may only be a New England thing. There, there are certain places where certain fines of certain natures are just unenforceable, right? Like that's, I, that's I, true. I got a, I got a drinking in public ticket in New York City, and I never paid it, and nothing ever happened to me. Nice. I walked away from it. There were certain fees associated with my, my uh, DWI in New York that I still haven't paid, and they have. But no, if you're under a nothing. judge's order to pay a fine, that could very well, well be. Yeah, you could get held in contempt or something like that. But it's, right. like I said, don't find out the hard way but find out say what happens if i don't pay this fine is a good question for you to ask even if you just ask an attorney or google it or something yeah i'll, I'll find out tomorrow i mean the, the court clerk is, is she's actually fairly knowledgeable I'll, I'll talk to her tomorrow see what the thoughts what her thoughts are and and, and take it from there but have you considered doing the hundred hours of community service by raising money outside of the uh, city hall <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a great suggestion but someone else actually uh, raised a good point we, we are going to try to partner up with food not bonds and set up a uh, small tent outside of the courthouse and hand out uh, food and clothing to homeless people. You could Is also, that legal? You could also, of course. whatever the homeless organization was that you gave the 45 bucks to that you, you guys raised, you could just yeah. go work for them raising money on the sidewalk out in front of the courthouse. That's what I just suggested <laughs> yes, a moment ago. More coming up. Free talk best. On Monday, Josh Liebarger made his status Case of the Mondays Followed by a frowny face It got one like and five comments, including Dislike Well, Josh, Geico also wants to make a comment To turn that emoji's frown upside down In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico With all that extra dough, why not give Monday a makeover? We see an office party in your future Hosted by you Hashtag happy face Hashtag savings Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. You Come see, to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Maybe you've got a question for Virgil Viduva. He is an independent photojournalist. Works with the Greene County Herald in Ohio. He just barely avoided going to jail, was sentenced to the maximum 30 days in jail, but those 30 days were suspended for a period of two years for the horrible crime of raising money for charity. Uh, but though, Mark, as you pointed out, without a vest, you, you sort of got that comment in very at the very end of the last segment. Right. I think uh, the vest really makes the difference. If you wear some, you know, cheap vest that the that, that says the organization's name on it, and you're making and you're raising money, then uh, you you have a very legitimate look to you. I wonder if that that's would what make a difference. It's all it, look. Th- that's what this world's all Clip about. Boards. Silly hats. Um, yeah. Once you have a silly hat on, you can do whatever you want. Police officers wear that funny octagonal hat thing. <laughs> they can do whatever they want. Um, you know, the judges have the silly wig. Now, not in this country, but you get the idea. They, yeah. They're wearing the, they wear the a robe. A black muumu. No one would be caught dead in this weird outfit <laughs> any place but there. And that's so it's all fine and dandy there as long as you've got the hat and i'm using the hat in the uh metaphorical sense right. it could be a shiny badge it's or the a... ga or the garb right. so virgil you're back with us here and there's actually uh dave who wants to talk to you so we're going to bring him on the Hello. line uh you were uh, panhandling of according to the state even though their own definition you did not meet that definition that didn't stop the jury from finding you guilty and the judge from ultimately going along with it and sentencing you to the maximum sentence actually beyond the maximum sentence uh possible again proving that the law doesn't matter what the words on paper actually say doesn't matter they do whatever it is that they want to do you want to break the maximum sentence break the maximum sentence you want to sentence somebody to a crime they didn't actually commit even though it's you know been made clear to you that they didn't Oh, I'll just go ahead and find them guilty anyway is what the jury did. So let's go to Dave. He's in Iowa City. You're on Free Talk Live with Virgil Vaduva. Hi, guys. How are you doing tonight? Go ahead, Dave. You're on the air. And uh, let's back the truck up a little bit. Uh, I guess Virgil was uh, representing himself as a pro se. Is that correct, Virgil? I was, absolutely. And... And as far as I know, a pro se is what's called a first-party testifier. So that means that anything that you write or anything that you say is first-party testifying. And it sounds to me like your judge downgraded you to a third party, which is a non-testifier. <laughs> and the war... Yeah, I, was, uh, I was pretty muzzled. Here. I was pretty muzzled in the courtroom. Well, but you yeah, did choose to not, to not testify, though. That was a choice you did. did make. I did. Well, that's part B. Okay. A pro se testifying has numerous problems because, A, he can't cross-examine himself, and, B, it's a violation of the Fifth Amendment, and eventually it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment, taking of property or seizing of your cash. Now, when he wanted your cash right after the trial, that's a violation of the 30-day appeal. Well, I don't know. Is there a 30-day appeal? What's the appeal yeah, rule yeah, there, there in, 30, in Ohio, Virgil? It's a 30 day. You get 30 days to appeal, yes. Okay. So for him to ask you for money within that period is a violation. Now, if you want to go to the case law, it's Marbury versus Madison. Anything that is in their court proceedings that's referred to as statute or rule is a violation of Marbury versus Madison, which says that anything repugnant to the Constitution, e.g., the 4th, 5th, 10th, and 14th Amendments, 
are a violation of that law, which has been on the books for a long time. Well, but we're sort of talking about this ideal constitutional society that we don't live in, right? I mean, these are not, this is not how courtrooms practice. And I think it's important to understand that uh, if anybody's listening, that this, you might not want to take this as legal advice. (laughs) Well, right. I mean, Dave, it's interesting, though, what Dave points out, though, that uh, he should be able to postpone paying the fine at the very least. That that one. uh, well, I mean, until you could, the appeal process. Well, I don't, I don't know that I, I, I don't know exactly what the statutes are in, in, uh, in, in Ohio, Ohio, in Ohio. But uh, you know, look, Rich Paul was in jail during his appeal. I mean, it's not unusual well, for right. you to be punished pending appeal, and then like, right. okay, like at least in that case, you know, if you win the appeal, you get your money back. Whereas you know, somebody who spends their appeal in jail well, uh, it can't exactly get it back. So it nope. depends on the rules of the state, right? So like, if uh, if you're appealing to the Supreme Court in New Hampshire, you have to sit in jail for that. Uh, or you have to you're on your sentence for that. Right. If you are appealing to the superior court in New Hampshire, meaning that you had a bench trial and then you want to appeal to a jury trial, then the sentence is completely put on on hold. It's completely put on the back burner while you do that appeal. So there's different rules for different types of appeals. So Virgil, where does your first appeal go to? What's the court that it's going to next? It's it's an appellate court. They Within meet New about Ohio. Ohio. Yes, it's an appellate uh, appellate court. They have uh, I don't know several districts in Ohio, uh, and it's it's here. It's actually in Xenia. The court they meet a number of times a year. It's not like they don't convene every every day or anything like that. Um, but interestingly enough, the lawyer told me that when you when you are pro se in Ohio, the judge is not allowed to sentence you to jail time. Uh, he needs to hold an actual special hearing where you. Uh, are uh, you receive special instructions about the dangers of rep- so-called dangers of representing yourself and so on? And the judge didn't do that. So he, mm. this guy violated all kinds of rules that I'm not even aware they exist. And honestly, Dave on the on the phone call, he probably his advice is probably awesome, but nobody knows what any of that stuff means. You know, probably the judge doesn't even care. You know, Dave, anything so, else you want to share? Yep. Um, let's switch gears. You you mentioned that the Constitution doesn't exist anymore, so. If you look at the U.S. Uh, Inc., and this judge has been under what's called a uh, – I can't think of the name of it now. It's a, uh, he's no longer statute. He's administrative. So even in the administrative okay. court, his procedures are in violation. And that can be tested. So you can play it either way, constitutional right. or administrative. In either case, he's, he's done no-no. Yeah, I mean, some right. of this may get overturned at the appellate level. Dave, thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, basically, these district court judges do whatever it is that they want to do, and they count yeah. on the fact that people aren't going to appeal. Because right, I mean, most pretty people much. Don't. don't expect any pretty kind much. of justice at the, the district court level. Yeah, yeah, it's, there's no justice. And I've been pretty much the lawyer. They don't guarantee a certain outcome, but nope. he was very confident this will get over- overturned on appeal. And is this guy working uh, pro bono, or how's uh, what's your deal with him? Um, he actually, so far, he hasn't charged me anything. He wants a flat fee. He's mm-hmm. he's done largely constitutional cases, and uh, and he's won. He's even argued before the Supreme Court. So, you know, based on what I've read about him and what I know about him, he seems to be legit. So, uh, flat fee all the way. And you Pretty expect impressive. that the uh, flat fee will be more than covered by whatever the settlement uh, you hope to oh, get out God, of this? Oh God, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm out yeah, of questions, so guys. What do you think the settlement's yeah. going to be? I oh, want to know. I, I have no idea. Well, whatever it is, I'm pretty sure I'll make sure that Free Talk Live gets a small portion. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> but I just to that. add, just to add one more thing. What kind of percentage just, are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the sales guy in in, yeah. uh, in market yeah. sense. That's true. But I wanted to add one quick thing. About three hours ago, I was driving through Xenia, and there was a, a pizza place. They had a little employee up front, a young girl, advertising with a big sign for, for, for pizza, right, some sale. And I actually called the police station. I reported a panhandler. And uh, because the, the wide definition of, that the judge took of the statute meets, you know, what she was doing meets that requirement. And a cop showed up, actually. You shouldn't have done that. Why did you do I that? Know, I, I know. I know. In here. I, I mean, I, I get being, what you were trying to do, but that's like swatting, well, dude. That's, yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I didn't call the cops on her. I just called to report a, a general, you know, violation. And I wanted a video recording of the cop basically ignoring the law. So... You know, it's it's funny because you're when you're putting them on the spot, they are not they they 
lack any awareness of what the judge did in court or what, you know, what interpretation of the law he has. But when it comes to them and they know who you are, as soon as he gets out of the car, he says, hey, Virgil, what's going on? You know, what are you doing? And mm. they don't care. You know, they obviously interpret and enforce the law uh, very selectively. Well, right? uh, we have so, some friends here in uh, Keene that are facing p drug paraphernalia charges, and the and the law is like so clear that you can run a head shop and get arrested for drug paraphernalia, and there can be a head shop right next door that they don't arrest anybody for, and it doesn't matter. It's, I mean, it, they really make it very abundantly clear that their interpretation of the law is all that matters, which just goes to show that rule of law doesn't occur. Um, right. You know, there's there's many people listening yeah, right now. An illusion of law that believe that there's that rule of law is what keeps society going and it's not we don't have rule of law we have rule of right. men and it's never going to be rule of law because there's men interpreting the law well right. it's, it's very selective yep. it's very selective they they and it's punitive right if they don't like if you're a known activist and ian you probably can speak to this firsthand they will use the law to punish you Oh you know? yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Virgil, thanks for calling in tonight. Thanks, thanks for the inside scoop, and you know, keep us in the loop with what happens with your motion for the alternative payment. You're looking to not pay the $150 fine. You did say you will pay the court costs, which I'm so sorry about. Uh, this is another reason to move to New Hampshire before you do your activism. I thought I think this activism. Oh God, great. Ian just has to turn it into. I, I think it's great activism, but you don't have court costs in New Hampshire. I mean, that's a huge deterrent against taking something to court. If you yeah. have to pay $700 to take a speeding ticket to court, Court, you know, a $50 speeding ticket, people aren't going to do that. And Southwest, they know it. Southwestern right. Ohio is the center for civil disobedience and activism in the world right now. Okay. <laughs> hey, thanks for the call, Virgil. That There's more coming one. up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour. Stops more of what makes you miserable. Uses directed. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best yeah. shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name and I get a free year of membership. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,188, silver at $16.75, and Bitcoin is trading around $245.90. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. In the news, new revelations in the Silk Road saga have the potential to change the fate of Ross Ulbricht, the accused mastermind of the online marketplace. On Friday, two former undercover federal agents were arrested for stealing Bitcoin from the Silk Road throughout the course of their investigation. Carl Mark Force, an officer with the DEA, was charged with wire fraud, theft of government property, money laundering, 
and is accused of selling information about the government's investigation into the Silk Road. Forrest also played a key role in bringing murder for hire charges against Ulbricht, charges that Ulbricht will soon face in Maryland. His mother, Lynn Ulbricht, told the Daily Dot the revelations of corruption cast doubt on the integrity of the entire investigation and the government's case. Tomorrow morning, the Houston City Council will vote on whether or not to spend nearly $500,000 on Stingray cell phone surveillance equipment. The council's vote comes just days after Houston Police Chief Charles McClelland refused to confirm or deny the department's use of the tools. Despite McClellan's lack of answers, public records show the department has been using the devices for several years. Stingrays, or cell site simulators, allow law enforcement to indiscriminately gather information about cell phone calls, including location, length of calls, numbers dialed, and, with newer models, the actual contents of the conversations. Activists and privacy advocates will visit the city council this afternoon to express their opposition to the purchase. 1,500 Californians joined the Electronic Freedom Foundation to defeat an effort by government officials in the state to allow the Department of Motor Vehicles to share licensed photos with law enforcement. The California Law Enforcement Transportation Communication Advisory Committee was expected to allow driver's license images to be forwarded to law enforcement facial recognition databases around the U.S. EFF says it continues to monitor the activities of the committee. Specifically, their goal is to include the collection of biometric information for minor legal infractions and tracking offenders with GPS systems. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by CoinArch, offering innovative trading solutions for Bitcoin. Do more than just buy and sell Bitcoin. Use long and short positions to profit in rising and falling markets and boost your returns through leverage. Visit CoinArch.com and sign up using coupon code LIBERTY and get free brokerage for the first 14 days. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Monday, the Supreme Court denied an appeal from former California high school students who were forced to turn their American flag t-shirts inside out during a Cinco de Mayo celebration at school. The appeal was denied without any comment from the justices. The students were originally told the administrators were worried about inciting trouble from students celebrating the Mexican holidays. When the students brought the case to court, it was denied after the judge ruled that the fear of racial violence outweighed the possible infringement of freedom of speech. Negotiations between the United States and Iran are set to come to an end today. U.S. negotiators are working to convince Iran's leadership to halt their nuclear program in exchange for relief from U.S. sanctions. If no deal is reached, it will be seen by many as a failure on the Obama administration's part. Success could mean stability in the Middle East and a shrinking nuclear missile threat. Spain's three new anti-terror laws are not scheduled to go into effect until July 1. But they already have human rights groups up in arms. The Penal Code, the new anti-terror law, and the Law on Citizen Safety were recently approved by the Spanish Congress. Critics say the laws are an attack on freedom of expression online and in the streets. The Citizen Safety Law, nicknamed the Gag Law, will criminalize public protests, free speech, freedom of the press, and filming police. The law has also legalized blacklists for protesters, activists, and press, as well as random identity checks. On the Internet, the Gag Law will criminalize tweets calling for protests or rallies. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is the Onion Week in Review. Citing his erratic social behavior, nondescript occupation, and habit of accidentally walking off piers while pretending to read newspapers, acquaintances of 37-year-old Jeff Walther suspect he may be a bumbling spy. Residents of Worcester, Massachusetts are kind of hoping a Panera Bread will show up and plow over an obnoxious neighborhood bakery. Locals have said that the soulless restaurant chain with its simple, impersonal experience would be just the thing to help run the precious mom-and-pop establishment out of business. Callahan's is really lovely and all, but it would be such a relief to have some college-aged kid take my order without making eye contact. I just need a cup of coffee. You know, we're not friends. A follow-up survey of Worcester residents confirmed that 72% of patrons would rather be alerted of an order by a vibrating pager than a kind-faced woman who calls everybody sweetheart. 
In other news, feds break up a brutal Las Vegas man-fighting ring. A Christmas card ominously makes no mention of the twins. And the Boy Scouts celebrate 100 years of preparing teens for not having cool friends. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free. I want to come back to Chris Cantwell's belief that the human race is doomed. Uh, we can do that here in a little bit. Uh, again, our number is 855-450-FREE. And, of course, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that we share with you on the site. It's totally free. And also, before we get back into your calls and thoughts, we do have some folks uh, on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Uh, so once again, that's lrn.fm. You can connect with us on Skype. We'll get to your thoughts here in a moment. I want to welcome our newest weeknight affiliate, listeners of Jackson's very own News Talk 970 WKHM. Uh, they are now on board for our just our third hour during weeknights. So so welcome. You're if you're in Jackson, you're just now tuning in. Uh, likely if you're listening to WKHM. So you have not heard the discussions we've been having previously on the program. But well, I just wanted to say hello. Welcome, you guys. If actually you're a WKHM listener, you, you may already be familiar with Free Talk Live because we've been on for a good part of a decade, uh, at least I think at least five years down there uh, in Jackson or up there in Jackson, depending on your perspective. On the weekend. So yeah, just it's been a Saturday uh, show affiliate for a long time. They've taken all three hours of our Saturday show. And now we are live all five nights of the weeknights for one hour per night. So again, welcome aboard. Welcome to the party, pal. And you can, <laughs> John McLean, uh, and you can uh, you can call into the show. You can bring up anything you want. That's kind of the point of Free Talk Live. So those of you that are new to the program, you're welcome to join us here at 855-450-FREE. As we go to your calls and thoughts, Nathan is on the line in Texas. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi there. I wanted to ask Chris Cantwell about uh, his article that he wrote about the uh, individuals that were at Liberty Forum. Uh, yeah. So the in, individuals. In the, so there was yeah. uh, the incident that we had uh, Damon and Ashley, uh, who are allegedly the found the people behind defu.org or were just sort of the um, the the free domain radio. Uh, people who were uh, doxing, uh, releasing personal information about uh, free domain radio listeners. I'm really trying to make this uh, term Dashley stick. I just want you to focus. It's not, right. not Damon and Ashley. It's Dashley. <laughs> okay. okay. Both so, of those well, are not their real names, by the way. Right. So, okay, uh, okay. what was your uh, so, your question about the article? Okay, so in the article, you kind of made an offhand mention toward certain people that uh, you don't like that you think should be ostracized, like left libertarians or something. And and then you also tried to recall a quote from Hans Hermann Hoppe. I, I actually have it. Um, it's the one where he was talking about excluding people from from communities in order to maintain a quote libertarian order unquote. Okay, I think you're and, t you're talking about my podcast. This is not in the article, but go ahead. Right. Right, but it, the the link between them is that this. Uh, it sounds like you have this idea that ostracism is not something that should be limited to criminals, which is there's something I've gone back and forth on. Um, you know, because a lot of libertarians say, well, if there's murderers or thieves, you shouldn't put them in jail. You should ostracize them. But that leaves the question, or that raises the question: Well, what about people who are nonviolent, who are nevertheless, um, I don't know, making things difficult, or you know, to what extent should people who are nonviolent but you know, maybe maybe what they're doing is I don't know making it hard for the community to exist or whatever. Right. So, for example, Molyneux, um I don't know if you've seen this lately, but molyneux has been on kind of a kind of a, a religion uh, a, a, a theme of praising religion. And one of the things he likes Someone's about someone's just tuning into the show, <laughs> yeah, because uh, Chris Cantwell yeah. well actually mentioned that earlier tonight. Yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, well, thanks so for you, recapping. So you know, he you know he approves of excluding people, like for example, single moms. He brings up a lot uh, people that he thinks would make society very hard to live in even though they haven't hurt anyone or initiated violence. And I was wondering if you could clear that up. Is, yeah, that, so is that what you think? In, in, in my book, I mean, ostracism is at the end of the day simply simple free association. You're making a decision whether or not you want to associate with a person or not. And, you're gonna, and if uh, enough people in the society decide to uh, disassociate with somebody, then you can say that they've been ostracized or exiled from the society, right? I ostracize people all of the time for nonviolent, non-criminal things. I block people from comments on my Facebook page. I block people on Facebook. I tell people, get the F out of my face. I don't like you. I don't want to be around you. And that's all things that are happening in the context of nonviolence. But doesn't ostracism take 
uh, selecting who you want to associate with to a more extreme level. Like, for instance, if you were to ostracize somebody and they were to come into your store and want to buy something, true ostracism would be to tell that person to get out of the store. Whereas to simply say you don't want to associate with someone, you may still want that person to come and buy your product. Well, I, I would I would say that you're, you're, you're refusing to do business with them. I mean, whatever. I mean, there's you could say that there's levels of ostracism too, right? Okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm fundamentally saying that anybody can choose to have whatever level of association with somebody that they want for any reason whatsoever. I mean, we were, we were getting into uh, the other day talking about this Indiana bill and uh, they they want a religious exemption to kick gays out of their stores or whatever. Well, I don't think that that's like the best idea in the world or anything like that. But if people want to ostracize people because they're homosexuals, I mean, that's their value system. They're allowed to do that. Uh, whatever a, an individual's reason for doing that is, is what an individual decides to do. And if enough individuals within a society deem a behavior to be unfit for that society, then you can collectively ostracize a person from a society for literally anything. I I talk about, when I'm talking about crime, when I'm talking about about thieves and murderers and rapists and 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 people who assault. Now that's a that's a situation where you can use force against that person. That I'm not going to ostracize somebody who's trying to mug me for my wallet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull out my gun and I'm going to kill him. So uh, you know, ostracism is the nonviolent way of dealing with nonviolent problems. Uh, well, that, that's good. That's a good point, and uh, it is true. There are different levels of ostracism. Like, for example, uh, returning to Molyneux, he he really loves Downton Abbey, and on Downton Abbey, they ostracize, I think, a single mother who, uh, like, they don't completely ban her. Like, she can still buy things or whatever, but like, she's excluded from polite society, so to speak. Yeah. And I think that that's really where the controversy in this is coming from, not from the violent people. But um, because you're talking about people making choices like, you know, independent choices, like, you know, whether to have a child or whether to, uh, you know, live in a commune or what, whatever. And, and the idea is that and the, the controversial aspect, I guess, is that by advocating these ideas, you're going to either lead to crime or or cause crime or disruption. So, for example, Molyneux would say, well, if you have a single mom, the kids will grow up and they'll commit crimes and that affects me. Um, so it's kind of a. It's kind of a meta argument. I, it's saying that something won't cause something's not a crime, but it, it'll cause crime or cause you know cause something to happen. So, so I don't think that Molyneux is outright calling for everybody to ostracize every single mother or anything like that. But he's fundamentally saying to like guys, like if you're if you're thinking about getting involved in this woman, you better you better think twice about it because what's the situation that got her to be a single mother? And the guys make some really important points about family and the relationship. And I and I do think that there's a certain need. Uh, you know, we talk about the moral decay of human society, and it's a lot of times it's relating to force. But I mean, he's he's got a point that it does come back to the family. I mean, this is where you learn to create your relationships and that sort of thing. And I and I and I do like look. I'm a guy who's like done drugs and had sex with prostitutes and done all sorts of like crazy sexual things. But like, I am realizing that like some of these you know sexual moral values are like sort of important. They're the fabric of human society, and part of the reason that we're getting to the point that we're at right now is is because those those values have completely faded away that you you know the the leftists the marxists the communists they all said hey we're all going to have free love and this was part of the mission to destroy the family unit and it has succeeded and that's part of the the problem that we have here so um I, like i said i don't think he's talking about you know exiling every uh, single mother or anything like that but he's he's saying to people you know uh start evaluating these things when you decide to make your choices in relationships right Right. I mean, in the Scarlet Letter, that was actually the plot, which was that the, the single mother had to wear a big le red letter A and be ostracized. So uh, it, it does sound to me, though, like he does. The single think mother. Wasn't idea. the Scarlet Letter about an adulteress? Uh, well, her husband was presumed dead at the time, but uh, then came back to like showed up later. So it was sort of a it was sort of I guess it was adultery, technically. Um, That's what the A stood That's for. That's what the A stood for. Yeah. Right. Um so, and it also talked about the um, sort of the unfairness of it. Like she was obviously an adulteress because she was pregnant, whereas the guy who with whom she committed adultery, the preacher man, he never had anything happen to him. So mm -hmm. there's, uh, you know, one of these these things is is it shows sort of the disparity when one brings down sexual crimes, one's usually uh, bringing them down on women as opposed to men. Nathan, thanks for the call tonight. So we're going to continue with your calls and thoughts about whatever's on your mind at eight fifty five four fifty free. 
agree. And uh, Chris Cantwell touched on it, I think, again there a, a moment ago, that the human race is doomed. And we can come back to that larger discussion here in a moment. Uh, but again, you can dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE and join us on Skype like Nathan did. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. More on the way shortly. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free to share your thoughts with us about whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Uh, before we go back to your phone calls and thoughts, Mark, tell me about LegalZoom. Yeah, if you're looking to get um, all kinds of 
common legal documents, you can do it at LegalZoom.com. And you can do it for a lot less. I'm talking about things like leases and deed transfers, divorces, pet protection, immigration, wills, DUIs, living trusts, living wills, trademarks, patents, whatever you might need in the course of your life to deal with these folks calling themselves the government or just regular folks. Well, many times you legal, need legal documents for them, too. Just go to LegalZoom.com. You can use coupon code FTL and save 10 bucks off your order. It's LegalZoom.com. All right, let's go to the phones and your calls and thoughts. Mike is in Oregon. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Chris Cantwell, and Mark. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, so, so the last time I called in, I talked to Mark and Chris. Um, I was talking about uh, having a judge's decision overturned, and specifically, uh, like in New Hampshire, when I was living there, uh, on May 18th of 2010, they, the state of New Hampshire lifted the ban on switchblade knives and completely abolished the knife law. So yes. no law exists now in New Hampshire for knives. So uh, what I was calling in about was kind of what Virgil was talking about, uh, doing something that is completely legal. And there's no statute saying you can't do it, but being found guilty. Now, in a case like what I brought up last time with Chris and Mark was, um, let's say in New Hampshire, you were carrying a switchblade knife on you. And a police officer saw it, and even though it's legal, he arrests you, he says, tell it to the judge, I say it's completely legal, you go to court, mm -hmm. and now the judge says, even though it's legal, I personally, he doesn't actually say this to you, we're going to make an example out of you, and you're found guilty now. And now you take it to an appeals court saying, you know, this is completely legal. The, the appeals court judge now says, uh, I feel the same way. I, we're going to find you guilty on a law that doesn't really exist. And in a case like what Virgil was doing, um, he was panhandling. There was no law or statute saying he couldn't do it. But yet because the judge had a personal agenda here or he doesn't like what he was doing, he was found guilty. I, I think what? that the, the issue that you're bringing up is a fundamentally separate issue from, from what happened with Virgil. They incorrectly okay. applied the law. You're talking about a situation, and what you called in about previously was they're, they're literally bringing charges on you that don't exist. It's perfectly, it's perfectly reasonable to assume that they will misapply laws, right? So, so mm -hmm. he's talking about a situation. You know, in New Hampshire, they're going to charge you with possession of a switchblade, even though possession of a switchblade is not a a law in New Hampshire. Now, that's, to my understanding, I'm not saying that it's completely like outside the bounds of reality, but generally, when we hear about somebody being convicted of a crime they didn't commit, uh, they're they're or or a thing that shouldn't be a crime. I mean, they're applying some statute. When you go before a judge. The way that system works and the way it's still pretty well structured to function today for all of its flaws, they have to actually say this is the law that you broke. Right. They have to have the RSA, as they call them here in New Hampshire, uh, on the charging documents. Yeah. And and I have never heard of a situation where they're charging you with a statute that, that fundamentally does not exist. If that is happening anywhere in the world, I'm really interested to hear they about it. They certainly have what they call catch-all charges like right. disorderly, you, you conduct, disorderly conduct, or, resisting you know, arrest, and things. Like disobeying that. an official yeah, yeah they can they can find something like that in most cases to charge somebody with it they want to charge somebody but you know to uh to, to say they could just write possession of a uh, a switchblade down on a complaint without actually citing the statute number i agree with yeah. chris that's just not likely to ever occur I don't know that it's okay. unlikely to ever occur. I mean, nothing ever surprises me with these people. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see at some point in the dystopian future of America a situation where a police officer literally just says, I don't like that, and that's literally what mm. you're charged with. But that's not, to my knowledge, functioning like that anywhere in America today. Well, I mean, I, and I do, okay, I, I do see what you're saying, and while I agree it's highly unlikely, I would still say it's not outside the realm of possibility. It could happen because you take, for instance, um, you get a, a ticket, you know, a cop pulls you over and you have, you know, these these boxes that he checks off, okay, you know, tinted windows, headlight out, and then it says down the bottom, other. Well, he can put whatever the hell he wants on that, and then you go to court, and then they can just put something on you that, you know, that, that, it, that, there's no law, but yet to make an example out of you, to crack down on you like the state always does. They're just going to throw something. I mean, 
I'm just saying it's not outside the realm of possibility. I would agree with you. It's not outside the realm of possibility. Any anything literally. Look, this is just a bunch of people doing stuff. So I mean, like I said, it it is it is. You're you're absolutely correct. It's not entirely outside the realm of possibility. But generally speaking, like I will give that much credit to the system of checks and balances as it presently stands. That uh, if a police officer writes you a ticket and in other he writes F you, and then you go to the court <laughs> and the judge is like, oh, the the, the, the cop wrote down F you. I don't see that in my statutes. But, hey, you know what? You look like a jerk, so I'm yeah. just going to fine you. And then you go to another court, and the other court is like, I agree with these guys. You suck. And, you know, I mean, I They just- have to have some level of legitimacy uh, in order for them to get away with this scam, in order, the- in order for them to get away with breaking their own laws. They still have to have the semblance or the appearance as though they are following the but, law. But what he's ultimately describing is like when not sure gets charged in idiocracy, right? Like, yeah. like if, you've seen that, if you've seen that documentary film, Great movie, uh, <laughs> documentary. Uh, you know, he goes in there and they'll and they. I, I forget exactly what they said, but he's like, "Oh, he talks like a douche or something," you know. Yeah. And like, this is the charge that's levied right. against him, and his lawyer is like, "Yeah, I don't like him either." And like, <laughs> this is literally how bad it would have to decline for the situation that you're describing. And I'm telling you, uh, you know, I so the bunch of people probably thought 1984 was never going to happen, and here we are. Thanks, Mike, for your call tonight, man. I appreciate the thoughts. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Let's go to Chris. He's in Phoenix. Area. Arizona. Chris, uh, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, uh, I was listening to you guys, and I was wondering if you guys had a chance to look at look at uh, Bill Montgomery's uh, comments uh, online. Who? Bill Montgomery? Bill, Bill Montgomery in Phoenix, Arizona. He made uh, a comment against a veteran uh, who smokes uh, pot. He made a comment against a veteran who smokes pot? Yeah, and it's, it's, on, uh, it's on video. It's probably you can probably find. Who's Bill, Montgomery? Is Bill Montgomery? Yeah, we have no idea who you're talking about or what the situation is. So maybe you fill in the audience. Okay, uh, it's on the internet, but he says that anyone who smokes pot is an enemy of the state and of the constitution. <laughs> Well, he may be right about the first part uh, in that uh, the state considers them their enemy, uh, but uh, I don't know if smoking pot goes against the Constitution. Who is this guy? I'm sorry, Bill who? Bill Montgomery. I don't know exactly his title. But is he uh, some kind of government was, agent? Some politician? Yes, and the, yeah, he's a politician, and the guy he spoke against is a veteran. Well, I, I love how they take they go for the veterans, right? Like it's a uh, it's always it's always let's trot out this person as a superior human being because they uh, signed up to work for the government for four years and potentially catch bullets for politicians. Um, uh, you know, I mean, the if he's a, he's a pot smoker, he's not pot smoking's okay or uh, or it's not. And Bill Montgomery is a scum sucker, whether this guy's a, a veteran or not. Chris, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I don't know if he was listening to our show. I'm not convinced of that. He claimed he was listening to an AM station in uh, Phoenix, and we're not on that station. Uh, Pirate. No, we're not on the station he cited, at least. Uh, 855-450-FREE. The station he cited is the station that wants to get money out of all the talk show hosts to get on their station, and we're not paying anybody for doing this show. It's Free Talk Live gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre retirement. And they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free and bring up whatever you want. 855 450 free is the number. 855-450-3733. Is the human race doomed? That's what Chris Cantwell was arguing for earlier. We can come back to that discussion here in a moment. Uh, of course, also want to invite you over to ChristopherCantwell.com. Yeah. Where yeah. listeners will find what? Oh, you'll find all sorts of stuff. I've got uh, uh, the top story there right now is titled uh, A Culture of Resistance and talks about uh, that. Something we don't have. Uh, no, we certainly do not. And I sort of laid out this case where, like, you, you if you look at the the people who work for the government make up about 6.9% of the population. The people who, Is that all? Yeah. Huh. Uh, in the United States, it's approximately 6.9% of the population. Now, that's a lot of people, don't get me wrong. But that doesn't, No, you're talking about people who collect a direct paycheck, not those who are co contractors for the government? Right. We're talking about people then it goes up who to like are government employees, okay. right? And yes, of course, there are a lot more people who are dependent on the state in any number of fashions. Right. But government employees make up about 6.9% of the population in the United States right now. And the people who are actually in the business of doing violence for the state, namely law enforcement and military, make up less than uh, six-tenths of a percent. It's about one for every 500 people, I think, is about the average out there. Something, something to that effect. So, the, the you know, it's a very small population of people who are actually in the business of doing the violence that the state requires in order to exist, right? Correct. And so uh, I started talking about this from, like, an overthrow angle that you're talking about, okay, you know, what res what percentage of the people would be required to uh, overthrow a government? And the, and the answer is, you know, less than 0.6% if you want to... Uh, uh, you, to outman the the violent agents of the state. Now, uh, now I, I'm I'm not advocating this 
that 0.6% of the population go overthrow the government. What I'm saying is that this should actually rightfully scare the hell out of people, okay? that Scare the hell out of the status? It should scare the hell out of you and me, actually. So the, the fact of the matter is, is that I've talked about a, a, an overthrow of the government before, right? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, let's just say that the people who decide to overthrow the government are an anarchist, right? Yep. Like, you could, li- you could literally have, you, you are, the society is like half a percentage point away from a communist dictatorship. Or, or Islamic Sharia law or whatever it is that scares the life out of you at home, that's literally the, the level of protection that your government provides you, that 0.6% of your population can overthrow your government with handguns, like with pistols. You don't even need superior weaponry and warfare, blah, blah, blah. Like you literally outgun, you outman them, you outgun them, you, you know, whatever. So mm-hmm. that's something that should scare the life out of you, even if you're a diehard statist, right? And what I'm saying is that, like, you need a culture of resistance to tyranny, whatever the society it is that you want to live in, that people would not tolerate such a thing, that that the people of the society would say, hey, I'm going to, you know, you, you're going to overthrow this government and then uh, rule over me the same way this government has been ruling all over you and stepping all over your rights. You need a society that is ready to defend itself. And we don't have that. And that should scare the life out of everybody. Yeah, I think we're starting to get a little bit of it in New Hampshire, though, where people uh, regularly, let's say, take a criminal charge to court, take a traffic ticket to court. I think that's some level of resistance, at the very least, is to say, you know, I'm not going to do things the way you want me to. You want me to just, you know, cut a check to you, drop it in the envelope? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to court. We're going to tie up the court system for uh, a few hours on just one charge or whatever. Make sure the uh, prosecuting attorney actually has to do work to get a conviction on a parking ticket. Right. And uh, and we're starting to see that happen more often. It happens a lot in Keene. We're starting to see some of it happen out in Manchester. The guys from the Le- Rebel Love Show uh, recently went to court and are planning on doing so again. So I think that we're starting to see that happen, especially since we don't have court costs here as uh, was pointed out earlier there there is a 24 percent penalty assessment as it is called so you can sort of call that court costs if you want to mm-hmm. but uh you know virgil viduva called in earlier tonight to talk about his sentence for doing panhandling a civil disobedience act 700 dollars in court costs for that you know here a penalty assessment uh, is 24 percent of whatever the fine is so like if he'd been hit with a 150 fifty dollar fine then you know the penalty assessment would have been uh you know, not very much. It would have been, uh, what, 30-something bucks or something like that. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I, I, that's certainly not what I'm getting at because the the the, the, the process is the, the problem, right? Somebody, you know, if you live, in a, you live in a world where the idea of going along with their process is where we consider this to be resistance, and that's fundamentally part of the problem is is sort of what I'm getting at, that, that that's – that's what counts as resistance in today's society. If you have, if you were to have a situation where the government of the United States or the government of New Hampshire was, you know, violently overthrown by some group, and those that group just started imposing other rules on you, and people said, "Well, going along with what they impose on me, I get what you're is, saying, is fundamentally how I resist this process." Yeah. Well, then any, literally anything can be imposed on you, and that's a that's a fundamentally dangerous thing. I mean, whether you're an anarchist or a libertarian, or whether you're a communist or a democrat, that's something that should really scare the life out of you that your society can literally be oppressed uh your your society can be fundamentally uh ruled over in literally any fashion by less than half a percentage point of your population well the good news is that the resistance could become more overt in the situation you're describing because the whoever the overthrowers would be wouldn't have the same level of legitimacy as the people who have the system today. Certainly. So the reason a- why so I think you make a good point, but the reason why resist the reason why going to court counts as resistance now is because we're still trying to work within this paradigm that that people have that to to do more than that would be seen as illegitimate by those people that we want to persuade hopefully to come on board with our ideas right. uh, but if there were was this violent overthrow then the idea of total non-cooperation would be more acceptable and indeed the idea of violent resistance uh, would become more acceptable Certainly. as well whereas those things right now are a little more difficult to engage in although non-cooperation I still still fully support in today's world let's go to David he's in Charleston West Virginia you're on free talk live hey David how you doing Hey, what's on your mind? Uh, let's see. I, I know you all had said earlier, um, you know, you talked about uh, people not being charged without a, a statute or a law backing up the charge. Mm-hmm. 
um, in most cases. Um, but uh, I wanted to bring up the the actual uh, uh, the federal income tax and how there's not really a law that uh, that says that that's legal. And uh, and also uh, our founding fathers are actually uh, uh, you know starkly against it. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. So so fundamentally, what's going to happen? If I've I've heard people say this that there's no law that you have to that says you have to pay income tax. And there's all sorts of laws that say all sorts of things about income tax. And mm-hmm. I am not sifting through them to try to figure this out. <laughs> fundamentally, if if you are brought up on charges for not paying taxes, there will be a statute that they are accusing you of violating. Now, if they're misapplying the law, they're misapplying the law. But fundamentally, when you end up in that courtroom, they will say, Judge, this choice. This, USC uh, title, yeah. this and that. Exactly. So, the, you know, the, the Internal Revenue Code, of blah, 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 and they were going to say exactly what, what code you're accused of violating. And if they're misapplying it, they're misapplying it. But fundamentally, they're going to they're gonna gotcha. charge right. you with violating a statute or a regulation. Gotcha. Dave, other yeah. thoughts? Uh, no, that's it. I, I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys. That's what we Thank do. You, Not a problem. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate that. 855 450 free. I can say that Erwin Schiff sadly, uh, you know, tried very hard to get out of uh, jail for not paying income tax, tried to trot out all these things, and he's in prison right now. I be- believe Larkin Rose attempted the same thing. Um, whether there's a law or not, I'm not going to make that argument because I'm not interested in hunting it down, um, you know, like anybody else. But I can tell you that they think that there's a law. Aaron is on the line in Philadelphia via Skype. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, Mark, Ian, Chris. I was uh, listening to the radio today on my commute to work. I work in uh, Wilmington and uh, driving down into Delaware, I heard that uh, the disc jockey had been mailed a speeding ticket that they got from tracking his cell phone for 7.5 miles where he was doing 10 over. Whoa. (laughs) He had about 15 people call in after that, all telling their stories how they've been getting these speeding tickets along I-95 corridor. Where they'll say wow. he's doing eighty you're, you're miles positive an hour. It's, you're positive it's the cell phone and not like the Easy Pass or something. Yep, cell phone tracking. They said they're using Google Maps to navigate to work and and. Uh, I and, have to see a link to this. Yeah, I'm going to Google that. Wow, that is uh, pretty shocking. I can't say I'm too surprised that they would do that. Uh, it would seem to be a violation of uh, your right to privacy, but maybe you know the cell phone companies are just letting them do it. Time for I, a I Faraday know. cage. Yeah, there's more coming up here. Uh, thanks, Aaron, for the heads up. Well, I did it. I finally left the Empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. For over 20 years, you've trusted lumber liquidators to make high-quality, beautiful flooring affordable for everyone. Delivering this value means you get the floor you want at the low price you deserve. So we've lowered prices even more. This week, get stunning Espresso Hevea 3-quarter inch solid pre-finished hardwood for just $2.99 or natural strand bamboo for 41% less than our competitors and 18-month special financing. You trust our value, we value your trust. For quality hardwood, see the flooring experts. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. Free Talk Live. There's going to be no food by February. Oh, that seems a little extreme. I find that hard well, to believe. Well, watch it happen. Hope you find Christ. You oh, mean. good luck, buddy. Thanks. What really turned me away from religion was the fact that most of them are so intolerant and nasty. 
What do you mean? Your life will suck unless you find Jesus. Well, I had Jesus a long time ago, and he didn't really do anything for me, so I got away from that. Right, and I can tell you that uh, if you want to have if you want to have that attitude with people, yeah. like, Good well, you better con- find Christ, or you're going to burn in hell. Yeah. Then uh, you know. <laughs> Good luck converting people. Yeah, I really want to hang out with people like you, there, Keith. <laughs> I really want to hang out with people like you. So I'm sorry to those good Christians out there listening that that aren't like Keith, but it's the it's the loudmouths like Keith that uh, that do real damage to your religion and, and how people feel about it. Free Talk Live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two. Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. Cantwell. And Mark. Don't forget to check out Chris's website, ChristopherCantwell.com. Lots of great content there. And our website, of course, FreeTalkLive.com. If you support what we're doing on Free Talk Live, then please become an amplifier over at amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month. And then you get perks like access to the Amp Only call-in lines, the Amp Only Facebook group. Chris Cantwell hangs out sometimes in that uh, Facebook group. I've seen you post there. When I'm not banned, which I presently am. Banned from Facebook, Again, that is. yes. Yeah, not from you, of right. course. Not from the Amp group, but from Facebook. For how I've, long this time? I got another 30-day. Oh, man. It's can, literally Facebook and me are like on on again, on for a month, off for a month. Geez. I can put your alternate account in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it already is, actually. All so. right, cool. Yeah. If not, let me know, and I'll, I'll drop you in there. But anyway, go to amp.freetalklive.com. You can help us out by helping us market the show more effectively to get Free Talk Live on more radio stations around the country and bring more internet listeners on board, expand our satellite coverage. All of this can be done with more dollars. And thank you for everybody who's amped the show. And and who is maybe considering amping the show, please go to amp.freetalklive.com. A-M-P, as in advertise, market, and promote, amp.freetalklive.com. All right, so we have determined that Aaron's call in the, the very end of the last segment, he was fooled uh, this morning. And it was pretty shocking what he was saying. The uh, disc jockey he was listening to as he was driving to work in Wilmington, Delaware, uh, was claiming to have gotten a speeding ticket that was ostensibly mailed to his home because the police had GPS data that showed that, you know, he was at one point on the road at one point, and then a certain amount of time later, he was at another point, and therefore they determined he was going 10 miles over the speeding limit, which could be done. I mean, this is certainly technically feasible, yeah. which is why it was a believable prank. It was an April Fool's joke. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, we went, we looked up, uh, the, he gave me the call letters of the station he was listening to. I searched for uh, those call letters in speeding. I found the disc jockey, Spencer Graves, on uh, Twitter, and earlier Earlier this morning, the tweets went as follows. Uh, earliest, The earliest one referencing this is from Spencer. He says, nothing like getting a speeding ticket in the mail, ellipses. And then the next one after that, I had no idea it was possible for the police to issue speeding tickets after seeing your speed for an excessive amount of miles through GPS. Uh, the next one, he claims he was on I-95 southbound. And then about three hours later from the 93.7 Wake Up Crew. <laughs> Spencer Graves retweets from his own Wake Up Crew account. Have a great April Fool's Day. Don't worry about your phone or the GPS. <laughs> so 
definitely April Fool's prank, but totally believable. So a good prank is, you know, one that's plausible, right? Right. Uh, at least in this this sort of prank scenario, uh, that this could happen, right? Like if the police were able to team up with Verizon or something like that and, and download constantly the data from their cell phone towers— this could absolutely be done. Right. There's a certain amount of data that's being pulled from your phone records now, and they say that you fundamentally have no right to privacy on that data. How long before they say that your exact location and travel rate of travel is, uh, you know, part of that uh, how, part of that lack of privacy? I'm not sure that uh, municipalities and states would want to do that. And they would not. Yeah. He, yeah. Here's why: they can currently you know, fill their ranks full of police officers, um, and, and any manager just wants more people underneath them, really, is what mm -hmm. it comes down to, especially uh, government bureaucrat-type managers. Well, police officers make a mar make marginally more money for the government than they cost. You know, they've, they've got health, they've got dental, they've got all the things. They're probably, I don't know, $100,000 a piece, certainly in some districts. I'm not claiming they get paid that, although some do. Um, I'm claiming that they cost that uh, from an uh, employer standpoint, including, right. you know... Um, and they ultimately generate revenue, which is a, right. a positive thing for them to have more of them. The uh, but they, they they generate that revenue. But a speed camera or this, um, you know, tracking cell phones or whatever, is going to generate significantly more. However, the government doesn't want that because people will actually start going the speed limit. If people start going the speed limit, they can no longer generate the yeah. money. This is what happens with the red light cameras. The government puts in the red light cameras to keep everybody safe, which is what everybody believes. And then as the revenue begins to diminish because nobody in town will run a red light anymore, then they start cranking down the length of the yellow light. And and at, at that point, they're just, you know, nabbing anybody they can. And that's why they make the roads less safe, because people are then slamming their brakes on in order to avoid an $80 ticket or whatever. And people behind them are going bang, 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 and lining up. And this is causing accidents. This is how governments kill with their, um, you know, with their, their, their laws. Yeah, I mean, even aside from the, the cell phone thing, like uh, at least in New York, so with the easy pass. Uh, they have all up and down the Northern State Parkway and Long Island Expressway, they have these antennas. And mm -hmm. what I found out is that those antennas are actually picking up your easy pass, and they are already monitoring your speed with that. So, like, you see these electronic signs on the highway that says, you know, this many minutes to this exit, and it's this many miles away. Mm -hmm. And what you will see is the, to is the, the electronic sign that tells you how long it's going to take you to get to that exit. It tells you that you, it's going to take you less time than the speed limit allows you to, right? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's telling you that everybody is speeding. And so they already actually have access to this data. That's they true. can start mailing people speeding tickets from the Easy Pass tomorrow. But if they did, then fundamentally, one, people are not going to use their Easy Pass. Yeah, that and, thing's going to get hit with a hammer. Right. And and then people are actually, and I mean, if you did it with something that they couldn't get rid of, then they're going to drive the speed limit. And that's fundamentally going to be bad for the economy. There's going to be traffic jams. They don't actually want it. Cyphes uh, adds on here. He says that he's seen this April Fool's joke before, so it's not even original to. Uh, well, he's a, di he's a disc jockey. Ninety three three seven some morning zoo hack. Ninety three seven wake up crew. We don't um, do original stuff. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I bet his Twitter followers are fake. But on a side note, he says this could be done without cooperation from the cell phone carriers, simply by tracking a phone's Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth signals. So yeah, sit by the side of the road rather than using radar. Use the driver's own cell phone signal, be able to lock onto that, and then uh, track that. Yeah, I mean, if your your Bluetooth had would have to be made visible, and I don't know, it's a technical thing, but yeah, it's uh, theoretically they could do a lot of different things if they really wanted to. All right, would it so be worth it? You can share your thoughts with us here at eight fifty five four fifty free. Chris Cantwell, let's uh, go back briefly to the discussion we were having before. Where you are arguing that the human race is doomed. Yeah. So, uh, I but mean, yeah, you're still here. There are so many different things to this, and and I and I don't know. Maybe it's, it's hard to really. Boil Nathan, it all down, Nathan yeah. brought up so the, the the thing that Molyneux has been talking about, and most of what Molyneux has been going into isn't in praise of religion, but he's sort of he's gone on a more like conservative bent, right? Hmm. And yeah, I, he does seem like he's getting more conservative as time goes by. Well, the thing is that when you start looking at some of the things that he's looking at, and I mean, I'm looking at this independently of Molyneux as well. I frequently disagree with Molyneux. I'm no Molyneux bot, okay. but. 
you know, you, you look at what's going on with um, the stuff between the genders, okay? All this feminism craziness that's being stirred up, and, and it's putting a lot of strain on the relationships. The divorce rates are through the roof. Uh, you know, uh, there's no... Uh, the, the, divorce is going down, isn't it, over time? Um, I mean, like, over the last the course of the last decade. It, m- m- my understanding is that more than 50% of marriages end in divorce. Yeah, but there's a, there's a group of people that throw that number off. So when you're talking about one person that gets a divorce five times, they really screw up the numbers for the one per, for the people that have gotten not gotten that's, divorced at all. That's, that's a fair assessment. But, you know, you can go into, and it's, it's an interesting thing, He does he's got a video out, The Truth About Sex. And if you look at it, like, there are statistics that you could say, like, well, you're more likely to have this problem if this certain category, right? Yeah. If you've already been divorced, then it's more likely that your next marriage is going to fail and whatever because you're fundamentally in a situation where you haven't addressed the problem that killed your first marriage and now you're going into another mm-hmm. one and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So that's a, that's a fair you. statistic. But it, it, it seems to me that people are fundamentally de- departed from reality. I mean, we just had a phone call with a guy who literally got arrested for raising money for charity. And yep. if you talk like and this is just the daily grind, guys. I mean, the stuff that we talk about on this show every single day is now just become we. And that's literally like a blip on the radio. Like we do that and then we go on to the next one and the next one and the next one. And this is just like normal. It's and sick. Yeah, it's getting I, everything that I see in front of me, it's getting worse, right? And I am looking at where I, I think that the solution to this problem has to come from, which is the libertarian movement, that this is the answer to the problem. And fundamentally, I see the libertarian movement getting worse and worse and worse by the day. I hear people screaming about race and gender, and it's all this this lefty liberal social value stuff, and it seems to me that those left liberal social values are in no small part part the 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 fundamental uh, decay of the human society and well, part of the issue with and obviously we're short on time here but I know. Uh, part of the issue with the libertarian movement is it's getting bigger and of course and that's a good thing but with that problem comes you know these issues where people start disagreeing about things i think the best thing you can do here chris you know if there's a word of advice i could share and that is to be true to yourself and put yourself out there, which is what you're doing yeah. with ChristopherCampbell.com. Uh, and that way you will attract those to you who are most like you. And hopefully that will lead to better things. I, I, I sure hope so, man. that's all we got, man. Because th- <laughs> this is being done in the name of growing the movement, just bringing in the left. And I feel like this is what's killing it. We'll be back tomorrow night. You can join us online in the meantime at FreeTalkLive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The latest episode of Cop Block Radio is next, after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.67 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,192 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $244. Antiwar.com reports one day after Saudi warplanes killed scores of civilians in an attack on a refugee camp in Yemen, the Red Cross has confirmed that the Saudi military is now preventing the delivery of humanitarian aid to the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a. The Red Cross had to land a flight full of medical aid in Djibouti after being informed by the Saudis that they don't have permission to deliver the aid to Yemen, which Saudi Arabia began attacking last week. Red Cross officials say they are still trying to negotiate permission to deliver medical aid to the the war-torn country, and they expressed growing alarm at the number of civilians being killed and wounded in the Saudi attacks. The Saudis have thus far appeared ambivalent about the civilian death toll, either shrugging it off as lies of Yemen's Shiite Houthis, or just insisting their military intervention is being done on behalf of the Yemeni people, at least the ones who survive. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports U.S. President Barack Obama on Tuesday vetoed a measure by Republicans in Congress that would have blocked a government labor agency's rules designed to speed up time it takes to unionize workers. The rules would shorten the time period between a union filing a petition to represent workers and an election, from the current median of 38 days to as little as 14. Employers would be required to share workers' names, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses with unions. The National Labor Relations Board adopted the rule last year and they are set to take effect April 14th. The Senate and House of Representatives, voting along party lines, approved a resolution this month that would have stopped enactment of the rules. On Tuesday, Obama followed through on a threat to reject the resolution, saying the rules represented modest changes that would make it easier for workers to unionize. The Labor Board still faces court challenges in Washington, D.C. and Texas over the new process from business groups who say it violates the National Labor Relations Act by not giving employers enough time to prepare for elections. The NLRB and Democrats who support the rules say they are designed to rein in misconduct by a minority of employers who draw out union election processes in order to threaten and intimidate workers. An NRLB spokeswoman declined comment on Obama's rejection of the resolution. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our client and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports Arizona Governor Doug Ducey signed a controversial bill requiring physicians to inform women who are receiving medically induced abortions that the procedure can be reversed. The Republican governor says he is defending the right to life. He is a known pro-life advocate, and opponents of the bill state the claim that a procedure to reverse drug-induced abortions is not supported by medical science. The new law also prevents women from acquiring health care plans that include coverage for abortion from the federal marketplace unless, for instances, of rape and incest. Ducey said in a statement, The American people overwhelmingly oppose taxpayer-funded abortions. It's no different in Arizona, where we have a long-standing policy against subsidizing them 